the up it's gone. Game time solo home run. Touchdown, but feels like fake hit, fake hit, scoring the goal. Strike three. Forget about it. Solo home run. And Navy is the 2016 Patriot League champion. Live from Hanover Insurance Park in sunny Worcester, Massachusetts. A Patriot League baseball champion will be named this weekend. The number two seed, Holy Cross, plays host to the number four seed, Bucknell. And alongside Justin Antwell, Brendan Glasheen, thanks for joining us here this weekend. Should be a great weekend of baseball, beautiful weather here in Worcester. Bucknell getting in this series really because they knocked off the number one seed in this tournament in Navy, knocked off a top tier offense and their pitching was outstanding. You know, there've only been two number four seeds to ever win the Patriot League Conference Tournament and it was Bucknell on both occasions, once in 2008, once in 2010, trying to replicate that result here in 2017. Flashback to game one in the semifinals against Navy last weekend. Danny Rafferty, the senior, broke the 1-1 tie. That was more than enough for Connor Van Hoos. The first team all league selection dazzled throwing a complete game, one run performance, faced just two over the minimum, had a perfect game through five. Bucknell was able to carry that momentum into game two. Senior Sam Clark sliced one of his three base hits to arm the Bison with an early lead. That was more than enough for savvy Southpaw Mike Castellani, who tossed his third complete game shutout of the season. Amazing to think that Navy was hitting 303 as a team, averaging more than seven runs per game. But over the weekend, they only hit 105, Brennan, and they scored just one run in 18 innings of work. Yeah, and Holy Cross is here because the midshipmen were knocked off by the Bison. So Holy Cross now turns to their firepower. They had an eighth inning rally as well that helped them get here. Yeah, they were able to hold serve at home. It was Cam O'Neill at a huge three-run home run in game one to get the party started. And Anthony Critelli, the first-team all-league first baseman, hit his 23rd career home run, second all-time in Holy Cross history to put an exclamation point on the offensive end for Holy Cross in game number one. And then first team all league selection, Brandon King, he had that curveball working, befuddling the Army batters. He cruised through seven innings of two run work as Holy Cross was able to win game one convincingly. Game two, a lot tighter. They were down by three in the eighth inning until Anthony Criselli laced a two run single to make it a one run affair. And then a costly error by the Army Black Knights not only allowed Holy Cross to tie the game, Brennan, but it allowed the Crusaders to take the lead. And now Holy Cross finds himself in their fifth championship game in the last nine years. And Bucknell looks to go for another championship, their first since 2014. Holy Cross in search of its first ever Patriot League championship. After this break, we'll have the lineups and first pitch from Hanover Insurance Park. It's Bucknell and Holy Cross for the Patriot League title live on the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. And we are just about set for first pitch of the Patriot League Championship Series Game 1 here in Worcester, Massachusetts. Let's get to the Bucknell Bison starting lineup. Bucknell this season with a big victory over Navy, the number one seed. Brett Smith, an all-Patriot League first team member. He's the leadoff man. Danny Rafferty hits second. He's at first base. Sam Clark, the third baseman, also a first team all-league. He hits third. Luke Johnson in the cleanup spot, second team All-Patriot League. He's over at shortstop. John Paul Bell, the switch hitter, hits fifth. He's out left. Kiefer Rawlings is the second baseman, batting sixth. Evan Klugerman, the catcher, hitting seventh. Luke Hartman is the DH, hitting eighth. And Chucky Scales is out and right to round out the order for Bucknell. Bucknell coaches Scott Heather and Coach Desenzo exchanging lineups as just about ready for baseball here, Brennan. Perfect weather, 75 degrees and, and outstanding. Scott Heather in his fifth year as the head coach, 13 seasons with Bucknell as a program. He won the coach of the year back in that 2014 title campaign for the Bison. Now a standing pitcher in the SEC at Arkansas too, so he knows what it's like to compete at the highest level. Holy Cross takes the field behind Brendan King, today's starting pitcher. He is the top arm for this Holy Cross staff. Keeping those shoulders loose out in the seats. There's King sporting his bright number one purple number. King this year, four and five, a 402 ERA and 12 starts. In game one of the semifinals against Army,
He went seven innings, scattered four hits, allowed two earned runs, no walks, eight strikeouts for the right-hander. Yeah, he really struggled with health, Brendan, in high school at Tommy John surgery, but he's been healthy, and he's been the undisputed ace for the Crusaders his four years on the bump. A two-time first-team All-League selection in 2015 and 2016. You mentioned he has a 4.02 ERA this year, but that doesn't define him. Career Patriot League tournament, 2.31 ERA. He's able to rise to the occasion. He's got a heavy hook and a heavy breaking ball, that 12-6 bite. He befuddled Army batters last week in trying to replicate that formula uh, this afternoon against a tough Bucknell lineup. Yeah, he's finished tied for first in the Patriot League as far as hits allowed at 54, so that 402 ERA can be a little bit misleading. There's Brett Smith getting loose, the inaugural Patriot League Defensive Player of the Year, Anthony Critelli, his impact on this city, never mind the Holy Cross campus. Make no mistake. He has been lethal. Here's the Holy Cross defensive alignment. Yeah, very fundamentally sound defensive squad. They're anchored by Austin Mazel in center field. He's one of just three Holy Cross players to start every game in center field this year. The Patriot League Rookie of the Year. He can cover some real estate in center field. That helps out the corner outfielders. Mazel, the 2017 Rookie of the Year in the Patriot League, just the fourth player in program history to accomplish that feat. Cam O'Neill, fellow teammate. Holy Cross second baseman won the award back in 2015. Let's get today's umpires for this Patriot League affair. James Albert is behind the plate. John Epperson is at first base. Tim Dwetweiler is the second base umpire. And Tim Lombardo manning things down the third base line. We are good to go for baseball from Worcester. Holy Cross the two seed and Bucknell the four seed. First time in seven years we've seen a number one seed not come into this Patriot League Championship Series. And it's the 109th all-time meeting between these two squads. It's a fierce rivalry. Holy Cross did take three of four last month right here at Hanover Insurance Park at Fridden Field. Uh, the lone game Bucknell won was when Mike Castellani pitched. We'll see him tomorrow for game two. And the first one is a strike from Brendan King. Smith's making his 190th consecutive start. The Ironman, the Cal Ripken of the Patriot League. A career 300 hitter in his time with the Bison. Senior against senior. And the next one finds the outer corner. And Coach Heather loves him as the leadoff hitter because he hits 387 to start an inning. And he had that huge leadoff double in game two against Navy. They armed Castellani with an early lead. Kings 0-2, waste pitch with the bender. Kings a senior, 6'1", 200 pounds from Brookline, Massachusetts. Was decent against Bucknell back in April when the two teams met in the regular season. And the 1-2, he gets Smith waving strike three. There's that off-speed pitch that I was alluding to, Brennan. That's what he's going to put you away with. He'll establish his fastball, dot the black parts of the plate in the outside and inside corners, and he's going to put you away when he gets ahead in the count. That's what he was able to do against Army last weekend, off to a strong start, uh, one batter in against the Bison. Greg Desenso, the 10th-year head coach at Holy Cross, he thinks he's got a top-three curveball in this league. King was outstanding a year ago, pacing this Holy Cross squad. Uses the curve to start things with Danny Rafferty. First baseman takes away. Raff drafted last year, but he wanted to come back for moments like this to play in the Patriot League Conference Tournament. And the next one is cut on towards second. Stabbed on the backhand by O'Neill. And he gets Rafferty in time. Two gone for Brendan King. This senior class is so important to Buck. Now they're top three hitters in the order. All seniors in Smith, Rafferty, and now Sam Clark. Digging in last weekend, Brennan, they combined for 10 hits and five RBI. A huge reason other than the fact that Connor Van Hoos and Mike Castellani shine bright on the bump. Holy Cross, meanwhile, doubles the senior class of Bucknell. Class has sniffed Patriot League championship opportunities. And here's a guy in Clark who definitely could get drafted next month. He just has effortless power. He is a treat to watch in batting practice. Those six home runs don't tell the story. Six foot six. And the 1 0 is sent out to deep left center field. Mazel wandering over, but camping under. Bill Schlick, a 1 2 3, top of the first for Brendan King. High fives all the way around. 
At the end of the half inning, Bucknell nothing, Holy Cross coming up. This is the Patriot League Championship Series on Campus Insiders. Took just eight pitches for Brendan King to escape the top of the first. Holy Cross getting set to swing the sticks. It's Josh Hassel in right field leading things off. Bill Schlick is the left fielder hitting second. Austin Mazel, the Patriot League Rookie of the Year, hits third. Anthony Critelli, the cleanup man at first base. Cam O'Neill, the second baseman, hits fifth. Thomas Russo at third, hitting sixth. Alex Wojtek, the catcher, hits seventh. Kellen McCormick, the designated hitter, hitting eighth. And Chris Rinaldi is the shortstop for Holy Cross batting ninth. Connor Van Hoos is the opposition, Justin. A oh, very talented pitcher. Last 16 innings of work for the righty from Virginia. One run in 16 innings. He threw a complete game gem in game one. First team all league selection, unanimous pick. He's got a wipeout slider. First one up and in. His day begins with the ball inside. You know, he really struggled with health his first two years. He's making his 13th start this year, Brennan. His first two years combined, just 14 appearances. One and one. And it's not the elephant in the room. The formula for Bucknell is they need some depth out of Connor Van Hoos and the Mike Castellan tomorrow if they want to have a chance to pull another weekend upset. One one to Hessel. Clips it down the right field line. Foul out of play. Hessel at 271 for Holy Cross. A homer in 21, 23, pardon, RBIs this year. Infield in normal depth for Van Hoos. Screamed foul again. And Connor kind of struggled against Holy Cross in the regular season. And, you know, he ended up with a 1.87 ERA in league play, which was tops amongst all qualified pitchers. But he labored in that game one outing. Bucknell ended up losing that game last month. This pitch tased down the left side. It's mishandled by Clark. He picks up his throw in time to get Hassell. That's great composure by a veteran right there. It was a low sinking line drive. The six foot six third baseman stabbed it, didn't panic, knew he had time, stepped into the throw. Good catch by Raff. So Holy Cross leadoff man is gone. You mentioned Van Hoos's start against Holy Cross. He actually opposed Brendan King in that opening game of a four game set on April 22nd as Schlick takes a bender. And these coaches recruit from the same pool. You know, Van Hoos was heavily recruited by Coach Desenzo, but ultimately sided in Lewisburg with the orange and blue. Just like Critelli, who we'll see coming up, almost went to Bucknell. Van Hoos in five and two thirds allowed eight hits, five runs, four earned against Holy Cross. Next pitch lined foul, one and two to Bill Schlick. Holy Cross left fielder at 278 on the season. Three bombs and 16 batted in. Here's the one two. Didn't chase the curve. The turning point of the season for Van Hoos was during their annual spring break trip in March, where Bucknell went down to Port Charlotte, Florida, played about 10 games in seven days. He struck out. 12 batters against Davidson in one game, and that's when pitching coach Jason Knights and Scott Heather knew that they found their ace. 2-2 is popped up into shallow center. Smith tracks under, and he makes the one-handed catch for out number two. Austin Mazel's turn for Holy Cross, and you can't say enough how good Van Hoos was. The stats back it up. First in the league in ERA, first in opponent's batting average, first in strikeouts. First in strikeouts via looking. Tied for second in wins. Second in innings pitched. I mean, the list goes on and on. He's a bona fide ace, and you feel really comfortable when he toes the rubber because even when he doesn't have his best stuff, he's going to keep you in the game. Like, he wasn't great in the regular season against Holy Cross, but it wasn't a lopsided affair at the end of the day. That one nips the corner. One and one to Mazel. Holy Cross batting average leader at 321. He's also scored 30 runs to pace the Crusaders. Van Hoos working quickly. Next one down and in. And shows you the maturity, Brennan, of a freshman. Hit in the three hole, leads the team in multi-hit games, reached base 11 straight times. You know, sometimes freshmen, they get tired this point of the season because the high school season usually ends by now. 2-1 is crushed the other way into left field. John Paul Bell camps under. 
And what do you know, both starting pitchers with one, two, three frames. We head to the second at Hanover Insurance Park in Worcester. Patriot League Championship Series Game 1, even nothing, nothing. This is the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. Top two in Worcester, Hanover Insurance Park, the site for the 2017 Patriot League Championship Series. Game 1, Justin Antwell, Brendan Glasheen alongside Brendan King has had another outstanding year. The senior leads Holy Cross in strikeouts. He's also got he had seven wins a year ago. He's no doubtably their ace. Yeah, he's just very composed in the mound. Seven innings, two runs last week against Army to set the tone for that sweep in the semifinals. There you see Army batters just chasing pitches. He gets ahead in the count. Nothing really rattles him. Uh, you know, he wasn't an all-league selection this year, but he's not one of those guys who cares about individual accolades. He's all about the team, and he's trying to uh, propel Holy Cross to their first NCAA tournament since 1978. His first one to Luke Johnson. Finds the inner corner for a strike. Johnson at 278. Six homers, 33 batted in for Bucknell. And the 0-1. Upper part of the zone for strike two. King loves to throw strikes. And he's very efficient. We've talked about Van Hoos. But we've got the two top opponents batting average guys in the league. And it's not by a wide margin. 0-2 is wide. So Van Hoos with a 221 opponent's batting average and Brendan King right behind at 222. Yeah, he got swing and miss stuff. And that's what you want from a number one starter. And these two teams are both built for a short series. One, two, struck up the middle. There's our first hit of the afternoon. Belongs to Luke Johnson. And he's really come on strong, Brennan. I mean, you think about Luke Johnson. Uh, first 28 games, only seven RBI. Last 17 games, 20 RBI. You know, he was about a seven, eight hole hitter. And Coach Heather slowly inched him up in the lineup as you take another look at that Chris single in the right center field. Yeah, last year Johnson split the starting shortstop job and fought himself on the all-second team this year in the Patriot League. King's first chance from the stretch. And a fastball, he blows it by John Paul Bell, the switch hitter on the left side against the righty King. Bell was swinging for a three-run home run with just one man on right there. That's a freshman that just needs to take a deep breath. Coaches love his maturity. I mean, a freshman hitting the five hole, very similar to Austin Mazel, a middle of the order hitter as a rookie on the other side for the purple and white. Bell, a local product for Bucknell from Downington, Pennsylvania. He went three for eight in the Navy series. He's just an old school guy, no batting gloves, kind of grip it and rip it type approach, really good athlete, plays an above average left field. One of just two freshman starters in the Bucknell lineup along with Hartman. And the 0-1 is low and away. And shows you the respect they have for, for uh, John Paul Bell. I mean, usually in a pitcher's duel that you just chronicled, you might be thinking about a bunt this early on, maybe one or two runs of the difference, but they want him swinging away. Cretelli holding the runner. 1-1 one, one is clipped off the shin foul. You know, it's a Bucknell team that's not going to outpower you. They've by far hit the fewest home runs in the Patriot League at just 17 all year, 12 fewer than anyone else in the league. But they've struck out the second fewest time, and they've drawn the third most walks. I mean, this is a team that's really going to go first to third on you, and they're going to get the timely hit and maybe the timely home run. Wojtek doing the catching for King. This pitch, a half-hearted swing, and it's sliced into the net. Well, for Brendan King, he was part of that Holy Cross team last year that fell in three games to Navy. Heartbreak again for the Crusaders. They lost in a sacrifice fly in a scoreless game in the eighth inning. I mean, that just has to sting all summer, but that's fueled them throughout this year. It's been in the back of the veterans' minds that you alluded to at the top of the broadcast, the 12 seniors. And they're trying to make history here in Worcester. Crusaders first baseman Anthony Critelli told the Worcester Telegram, we've been thinking about this moment since we lost last May. So Holy Cross anxious, no question. We'll do the one-two again. 
after the foul ball by Bell. Yeah, pesky at bat by John Paul Bell here, just spoiling tough pitches to stay alive. And you can tell the way somebody's locked in by the way they take a pitch. He's very quiet. He's relaxed. Just a freshman. And King's first check over at first base on Johnson. Bucknell's second fewest stolen bases in the Patriot League. They were picked off a couple times last weekend in the semifinals. Rowlings and Klugerman were picked off at first. 1-2 pitch is soaring foul again. Pesky at bat here. Still nobody out in the second. Yeah, John Paul Bell, good athletic bloodlines. He's the cousin of Ty Montgomery, the starting, I guess, now running back for the Packers after Eddie Lacy signed a deal with the Seahawks. And the one-two again. Fastball doesn't find the edge. Two and two. What a take. I mean, that's that's a senior taking a pitch, but in a freshman body. I mean, wow. Are you suggesting, by the way, that <laughs> we should get fantasy <laughs> advice from John Paul Bell, <laughs> Ty Montgomery, having a breakout year towards the end of the Packers season? Yeah. Former Stanford All-American, so high academic guy as well. Grounded foul again. What an at-bat here from John Paul Bell. This will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up here, Brennan. Very impressive. And King had eight pitches in the first right. inning altogether. <laughs> Still no man out. King started game one against Army last week. Holy Cross got the win handedly, 8-2. to two. And he calls time. Bell really controlling the tempo here against a senior in Brendan King. Brookline native gets the sign from Wojtek. And the 2-2. Curve drops low. Another tough pitch to lay off of. Maybe you think about sending Luke Johnson here on a 3-2 count. It's been a long at bat. You've seen the hand-eye coordination from Bell. He can put the ball in play. Looming on deck, it's Rawlings. I guess the whole idea of sending him would be to stay out of the double play, open up a vacated hole, try and make something happen early. Every base runner precise in this championship series. Payoff pitch. First base side, a foul ball. Very close. John Epperson with the ruling, first base umpire. And Johnson was on the move on that sequence. So this will be the ninth pitch of the at-bat coming up here for John Paul Bell. Lucknell pretty much going with the same lineup they used in the two semifinal wins against Navy. They did take out Winsig, who uncharacteristically struggled a little bit, inserted Hartman. King, another peak over at Luke Johnson. Johnson just three steals all year and four tries. Bucknell's team leader only has nine steals all year. Chucky Scales, the nine hitter. King is paying extra attention now to Johnson. He's got a battle already with Bell here at the plate. Holy Cross still searching for its first out of the top of the second. Johnson's off. Fly ball into right. Hassel started in. Now he's back, and he makes the catch. Nine pitch at bat results in a fly out to right, but you know what? That's got to do well for the hitters hitting behind John Paul Bell as he gets some hugs and hand pounds in the dugout from his teammates. That's a pesky at bat from a rookie, and maybe that could pay dividends down the line. That yeah, led to a round of applause from the dugout down the first base side. Kiefer Rawlings set to climb in with one man out. Rawlings tied for second on the Bison RBI list at 28. DH from Bel Air, Maryland. King still in the stretch. Good block by Wojtek. And when you think of Bucknell baseball, you have to think of player development. Coach Heather and his staff do such a great job. I mean, you think about the strides Luke Johnson has made since he walked onto campus three years ago. Keeper Rowling's played in 12 games his first two years, making his 47th start his junior year. Big wave and a miss for strike one. 
Chucky Scales, who we'll see later on, was an exclusive pinch runner his first two years. And now he's an everyday uh, corner outfielder with this team. These student athletes just get better. They learn from the upperclassmen and just kind of pass the baton along. And I don't know where this team would be without Luke Johnson, Kiefer Rawlings, and Chucky Scales, who were kind of afterthoughts their first two years in Lewisburg. But they're an integral part to this team that's eyeballing their seventh Patriot League tournament title, which would match Navy for most all time in PL history. Yep, four in the last 10 years. Caught him with the curve again. Kings got, got control of this at bat. Rawlings trying to bounce back in this series. He went just one for eight with four strikeouts in the semifinals against the number one seed midshipman. And he needs to take a deep breath like he's doing right now. He was trying to pull a curveball that was down and away. You have to take that pitch through the right side. And there's a huge hole on the right side if he can choke up on the bat with two strikes. Yeah, Cam O'Neill, Holy Cross second baseman, peeking to that second base bag. Crusaders aiming to turn two to get King out of the inning. Good patience there, lays off the curve. The King's trying to get that low strike from James Albert, but he's not getting that call, and you're going to need to make the adjustments when you realize the umpire's not going to give you that call. You have to elevate your secondary pitches and your fastball a little bit more to get those borderline pitches. Rawlings had a notion, but holds back. Count fills up again. More good takes by the Bucknell Bison. Bucknell was able to practice last night. Got in at about 6 o'clock. They actually practice under the lights at 8 p.m. Just yeah. like Little League. <laughs> They're not used to playing with lights, though. There's no lights at Depew Field. What an at-bat. Down 1-2, Brennan, he works a walk. First and second, just one man away for Evan Klugerman. And the coaches foam at the mouth about Evan Klugerman. This kid is the real deal. Just a sophomore, great size for a catcher at six foot three. Had a great semifinal series against Navy. Five for eight, two doubles, and a run scored. King looking to bear down. First pitch swinging, heaved into deep center. Mazel, he's ready to go, makes the catch. Runner from first, Johnson tags easily. He's down to third. More importantly, Brendan King's got out number two. Klugerman got a little under the hanging breaking ball from King. That was definitely a hittable pitch. A mildly productive out, as you mentioned. It advances Johnson to third. Now a wild pitch slash pass ball could allow Bucknell to draw first blood. Interesting approach. You see two really long at bats and <laughs> then a first pitch hack. Nearly made a huge difference in game one of this championship series. Holy Cross still looking for its first ever Patriot League title. This is their fifth title series appearance in eight years. And the first one to Luke Hartman. This is away for ball one. Yeah, just his eighth start all year. He had a huge pinch hit single in game one in the eighth inning. Bucknell was down one nothing. He leads off the inning, pinch hitting for Tyler Winsick, laces a single up the middle. It jump starts a five run rally. Kerr floats in for a strike. Yeah, it took Bucknell just two games to take down Navy, outscoring the midshipmen nine to one. And with all the attention on Navy's offense and seven all league selections for the mids. Yeah. Really incredible when you think about it. Just one run and then two complete games from Bucknell pitching. And they got the timely hitting. You know, they, their offense wasn't too gaudy, but they did just enough. Hartman rips it back foul. Hartman from Birmingham, Alabama. I mean, Coach Heather, he goes, he goes far to recruit players. Klugerman from South Florida, Hartman from Alabama, uh, Jack Simpson, a reliever who we may see. Uh, from the state of Washington, Sam Clark from California. One two pitch. Curveball, wave it a miss. Brendan King escapes trouble in the top half of the second. Still no score between Holy Cross and Bucknell in game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. Bottom two in Worcester, still no score. Connor Van Hoos, the arm on the mound for Bucknell. 
He has been the horse for this team, no question. He's been one of the top arms of the Patriot League. Absolutely, comes from a great athletic family. His father was an outstanding pitcher in the SEC at the University of Kentucky, and he's carried that over to the mound his junior year. He's really blossomed after being plagued with injuries his first two years. The political science major has just dazzled. He competes, he's a grizzled veteran, he pounds the strike zone. You mentioned it, Brennan, he leads the league in strikeouts, and he threw a quick 12 pitch top of the first inning, or bottom of the first inning to set the tone for the orange and blue. Unanimous All-Patriot League first team selection. Take it on four through six in the Holy Cross order. And the fastball downstairs to Anthony Critelli. The oh. unquestionable leader of this Holy Cross program, three-time all-first team. That's a strike. Just a commanding presence at the plate. I mean, he's one of those guys you want to be the first guy off your bus to intimidate the other team. Like, whoa, they all look like that? We may be in trouble. <laughs> Big broad shoulders, <laughs> six foot four, 240 pounds. He just looks like a baseball player. 6'4", 225, puts a charge into this pitch, out to left, but John Paul Bell reels it in. A footstep or two before the track, allowed out number one. And that's great scouting by the Bucknell Bison, because right before that at bat, they were telling John Paul Bell, hey, scoop back, we know this kid's prodigious pop. As you take a look at the replay, John Paul Bell was playing him back, and he didn't have to sift that far to catch it at the edge of the track. Critelli tied for fifth in the Patriot League in home runs with seven. Cam O'Neill steps in. First one is high. He's got nine dingers this year. He had that huge three-run home run in game one, Brennan, that set the tone for the Black Knights. Uh, he's just been outstanding. Next one is popped up right side. There's room for Rafferty momentarily. And this one climbs out of play. I guess the only thing that kept him from being on the all-league team, maybe his batting average was, wasn't too uh, great, just above 200, but leads the team in homers, leads the team in RBI, like you mentioned. Just a blue-collar player, a hockey player uh, in high school, and that's what really stands out to Coach Desenzo. He's going to recruit you based on your toughness. Junior from Lynn, Massachusetts. You Two know, balls and a strike. We caught up with Coach Asenza before this week. I said, you know, what's your recruiting philosophy? He said, I'm looking for really good athletes. I'll, I'll figure out where you're going to play once you come to campus. But I want to know, did you play football in high school? Did you play hockey? How hard did you run the bases? What kind of at-bats did you take in high school? Not necessarily a stat guy. And and it's a blue-collar team. This one out of play. Coach Desenso was a football player at St. Lawrence University. And a soccer player. And a soccer and player. And he, a baseball he, player. He's he, a good athlete. He stayed busy. <laughs> Tenth season with Holy Cross. Scott Heather. Fifth year with Bucknell as the head coach. Big wave at a miss. Van Hoos uses the cheese to take care of Cam O'Neill for out number two. First strikeout of the game for Connor Van Hoos. Five up, five down. He had five perfect innings last weekend against the Navy mids. He's just been dialed in. Thomas Russo's turn. 297 average for the junior Russo. Coach Desenzo thinks he's one of their most improved players from a season ago, offensively and defensively for the Crusaders. Yeah, the junior's done a nice job. Second team all league pick. Chases one, he's quickly down 0-2. 19 RBI, 21 runs in 44 games. He played every game for Holy Cross this year. Yeah, riding a six-game hitting streak at the most opportune time. Goes the other way on the 0-2 pitch, drops foul. A little inside-out approach against Van Hoos, and when you're a lefty, that slider is going to drop down and in on you, and you just got to try and battle and stay inside the ball and flick it the other way. And Van Hoos, he has such a good rhythm on the mound, too, and that's going to help out his defense. And it doesn't dilly-dally out there. He gets the signs from Klugerman, and he's ready to rip and fire. See if he goes with the slider. High fastball. You're really impressed with that wipeout slider he's got. It is. It's very, very impressive. You know, he really trusts his arm this year. I think he was a little apprehensive his first two years because he was injured. But he can just let the ball fly this year, and it's showing. Jason Knight loves him the longtime pitching coach for the Bucknell Bison, a Mifflinburg native. He grew up about 10 minutes away from Bucknell, was a, 
a standout at East Carolina University, played a little bit in the Giants organization, knows a lot about pitching. And uh, he foams at the mouth about Evan Klu about uh, Connor Van Hoos. Targeting Russo, the curve well outside, but he chased back-to-back -back strikeouts for Connor Van Hoos to end things in the second. We head to the third inning in Worcester. Patriot League Championship Series, game one, still scoreless. Patriot League Championship Series in Worcester. We take a look at the championship history. In the conference, Army West Point with seven, Navy with seven, Bucknell aiming to tie for number one, make it a three-way tie. And the one school missing there, Holy Cross, because they have no Patriot League championships. This is their fifth appearance in this series in the last eight years. They're due at some point here. They are. And before the Patriot League, they had some success. They won the College World Series in 1952. They last made the NCAA tournament in 1978. I think gas was only like 63 cents a gallon <laughs> back then here, Brennan. But there's a lot of parity, though, in this Patriot League, because if Holy Cross wins it this year, that means in the last five years, five different teams would have hoisted the hardware in the Patriot League. It would have been Army, Bucknell, Lehigh Navy, and then Holy Cross. So I think the league has a lot to be proud of with the depth and continuity that this uh, prestigious league has to offer. Chucky Scales showing bunt, pulls back, but it's 0-2. Bucknell doesn't play too much small ball, but Scales is one of their better bunters. See if Russo cheats in, not anymore with the 0-2 count. Curve got him swinging this time. King drops the hammer on him, and that's his second strikeout today. Yeah, looking for a much cleaner inning. Yeah, obviously he put up a zero in the second, but he had to throw 26 pitches. And gets Bucknell started out with a strike as the lineup turns over for Brett Smith. Yeah, 26 pitches in that second inning for Brendan King. Eight in the first inning. Top of the order, Brett Smith. Foul ball down the third baseline. You think about Brett Smith, he's the prototypical student athlete. Obviously, gaudy numbers, two-time first-team all-league selection, defensive player of the year, rookie of the year back in 2014. Brennan, he's a mechanical engineering major. His senior year, he took a thermodynamics class. Usually your senior year, your second semester, you're going to take it easy, focus on baseball, hang out with your friends, look for a job. He's taking thermodynamics, and he'll graduate on Sunday. Busy weekend for the seniors at Bucknell. Bucknell graduates this Sunday. Oh, and on top of it, this is 190 <laughs> straight starts in center field for Brett Smith. He has been inserted into the Bucknell program the minute he got to school. Got him again, though, on strikes. Brendan King, back-to-back -back Ks using that breaking ball. And it was the breaking ball that fooled Brett Smith in the top of the first, and it does the same for him here in the third inning. Take another look at this pitch. Just tails out and away. Smith doesn't use his legs at all, just lunges for it way out in front. A quick at bat for him, strike three. Two hitter in Danny Rafferty. First one in the dirt. Raff's just a gamer. You know, I know he wasn't an all league selection, he was last year, but uh, from Chicago, Illinois, drafted last year, didn't want to play pro ball, wanted to come back, get his degree in political science win a championship, and that's kind of the theme with the senior class. They want to book in their tenures. They won as a freshman in 2014. Most of them weren't stars then, and they want to end their tenure uh, hoisting some hardware. That'd be something. Hard grounder to second, gobbled up by O'Neal. Brendan King with a 1-2-3 third inning, bouncing back from that long second frame. We head to the bottom half of the third, still no score in game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. Holy Cross players up on the top step, taking in this Patriot League Championship Series game one. A big reason why Holy Cross is here, Austin Mazel, the rookie of the year in the Patriot League. He really took this league by storm and he's played a steady center field. Yeah, one of just three Crusader players to start in every single game this season, a second team all league pick. Says a lot about you when you're a freshman, you're hitting in the three hole for Coach Desenzo's squad. Loves his mental toughness and his makeup, and uh, he plays typical Crusader baseball. Just hard nosed, blue collar. Done a great job for the purple and white. Yeah, the last Holy Cross player to take Rookie of the Year was Cam O'Neill, his teammate. 
who won it back in 2015. Alex Wojtek to get it started. He's the catcher for Holy Cross. Van Hoos has been perfect through two last 18 innings, just giving up one run. Yeah, he was filthy against Navy. Didn't allow any base runners. He had a perfect five innings. Went the distance in that one. Wojtek lays off. But he went around, says the home plate umpire, James Albert. No even need to appeal. And Holy Cross's dugout doesn't like that call. Use, I think they want an appeal at the bare minimum. Wojtek, one for seven with the run scored in the Army series. One, two, he slices it right. Twisting foul. Wojtek, another senior for Holy Cross. A group of... 13 men looking for their first Patriot League title. That's for the school as well. Boytick hits below 200, does have five home runs. Two of them came in the regular season against Bucknell last month in a series win. Grounded foul by the Holy Cross dugout. And we showed him in our open. I mean, he's hyped up. He's got all the swag flowing this week, and he has the, the faux hawk with the uh, interlocking HC embroidered in the side of his head. It's spray painted in purple. Uh. Yeah, truly a shame he's got to wear a helmet <laughs> when he's hitting. <laughs> One, two from Van Hoos. Got him swinging. Three straight strikeouts, Brennan, for Connor Van Hoos. Seven up, seven down for the junior. Yeah, it felt like in that first inning he allowed a couple of deep flyouts by Schlick and Mazel. Even Critelli's smash to left center. But he's starting to pick things up and figuring out the approach. Kellen McCormick, Holy Cross DH. Keeps those hands tight. And Van Hoos gets behind early. Another one of the more improved players uh, per Coach Desenzo on this squad. Exclusively been a DH this year. And he was voted the team's most improved player. One for seven in the Army series. McCormick just a sophomore from Rockford, Illinois. Van Hoos, by the way, just a junior. It's 2-0, chopped to short. Johnson snags, throw in time. Johnson returning to Massachusetts where he grew up. Grew up idolizing Dustin Pedroia, big Red Sox fan. That's why he plays the middle infield. And Johnson's father actually Attended WPI, Worcester Polytechnical Institute, right down the road here from Holy Cross. Father played baseball, football, and he was a ski team member. <laughs> Greg DeCenzo, take notes. First offering to Rinaldi. Holy Cross, nine place man. Finds the zone. Rinaldi, just a freshman. Tough to Pull the string on that hook. Quickly behind 0-2, oh Rinaldi, a freshman from Westfield, New Jersey. Van Hoos just looks locked in. He's got the sign. He's ready to go. Good frame attempt by Klugerman. Rinaldi had a 17-game on base streak earlier this year. Impressive for a freshman. Defensively, he struggled. More known for his offense, though. Got him swinging again. The curve doing the job for Connor Van Hoos, the unanimous all-first league selection, has been dynamite. We're through three innings at Hanover Insurance Park in Worcester. Game one of the Patriot League Championship Series still knotted nothing-nothing. Just about to start the fourth inning in Worcester. Hanover Insurance Park is the site. Bucknell Holy Cross, game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. And for more on Brett Smith, leadoff man for Bucknell, here's Justin. League's first every year of handing out the Defensive Player of the Year, and it was a slam dunk choice for the coaches. Brett Smith earned that feat. Outstanding job covering some real estate in center field. Oh yeah, he hit 405 in league play as well. Just an outstanding player. He's Bucknell's all-time hits king, 230 career hits. He actually broke the all-time hits record right here in Worcester last month in a series loss to the Crusaders, but he is the Ironman 
in the Patriot League. 190th consecutive start. Teeth of the order due up here for the Bucknell Bison. No score. Top of the fourth inning. 75 degrees and gorgeous outside. Sam Clark leads the team in home runs with nine digs in. Flew out to deep left field his first time up. The lefty from California has himself a 1-1 one -one count. The Major League Baseball draft, Brennan, is next month, and there are 40 rounds. I think it'd be wise for one of the 30 baseball teams to take a flyer on Sam Clark. He shoots this one at deep center field. Drifting back is Mazel at the warning track at the wall. Clark cranks one over the wall and gone. Seventh home run of the season for Sam Clark. Just some prodigious pop off his bat. That was an effortless swing, and the Bison draw first blood here in the road half of the fourth to take a 1-0 lead. Bench is fired up. Hey, he's top 10 in the league. That's his seventh homer, like you mentioned. Eighth in the league coming in. He leads the team. He also leads this team in strikeouts, but he's willing to put a charge into a pitch. Mazel clearly thought he had a chance, but this ball just had too much pop on it. Sweet swinging Sammy Clark. Two-time first-team All-League selection at third base. He's matured so much over the years. And he's part of this senior class that's trying to book in their tenure with a championship. Johnson hacks the first pitch, bounces one to third across the diamond, a bit high, but the first baseman, Scritelli, is six foot four, able to easily handle it. And there's one away here in the top of the fourth inning. Now batting, John Paul Bell, who saw nine pitches his first time up. As you take another look at that diving play to his left, and the throw a bit high, but Cretelli was able to hang on to it. John Paul Bell, he knows what's in King's Arsenal. But this is a Holy Cross team that's extremely resilient. But smiling in the dugout ear to ear has to be Connor Van Hoos as he's armed with an early lead. It's pretty incredible the amount of one-run games Holy Cross has played in. Fastball up, count you know, two and zero. Oh. You know, never mind this season itself. Seven and six this year in one-run games, but since 2010, Holy Cross has played in nine one-run Patriot League tournament games. Amazing, amazing toughness. Over half their games were decided by three runs or fewer this year. That was a rare home run for Bucknell. Just their 18th home run of the season. This is their 48th game played. Swing and a miss. Count two and one, but Sam Clark has seven of their 18. Yeah, unfortunately for King, no one on base, just a solo shot. Doesn't do all that much damage. Of course, he gives someone a lead here. The two one, swung out and missed. Two and two. Yeah. You know, and King really battled against this Bucknell team back in April. Allowed three earned runs over six innings. He still gave his team a chance to win, and that's all you can ask for in this one. The 2-2. Pulled the first. Tricky hop. Fratelli Fields flips to King for the 3-1 put out. That's pitchers fielding practice at its finest. Spring training still paying dividends here in mid-May. Two away. This brings up Kiefer Rawlings, who drew an impressive walk, Brendan, his first time up down in the count, and then Rawlings was able to work a walk. Take another look at that tricky hop that Cretelli had to battle. He's played on this field quite a few times in his four years. He knows all the kind of quirky angles that Hanover Insurance Park has to offer. And, hey, that's great discipline there by King. I mean, you give up the home run, you come right back and get two ground ball outs. Rawlings was on the all-academic team, an accounting and financial management major, so a great student athlete. Count 2-0 to Rawlings. Today's scholar athletes, tomorrow's leaders. That's the Patriot League motto. And a hat tip to all the student athletes this year as the athletic calendar year is coming to an end. We had the rowing championships and cross-country championships the last couple weeks. Swing and a miss, 2-1. and one. Another successful year across uh, all the uh, athletic teams for the 10 teams in the Patriot League. Uh, everybody should be very proud. Graduation on Sunday for Bucknell. A 2-1 to Rawlings, who's just improved mightily over the years. A 238 hitter his first two years, 268 this year. Has himself a 3-1 count. Usually he's the DH, but getting a spot start at second base. More known for his hitting. A 3-1 here in the fourth. We'll do it again, count three and two. 
Sam Clark's home run is arm buck now with a one nothing lead that let off this frame. A towering shot to center field. Be a payoff pitch here to Rawlings, his second full count at bat. The three one, the three two, lined on top of the Bucknell dugout. Count three and two now. We saw this piece of the order in the first inning, part of the second inning, give King a battle. John Paul Bell with a feisty at bat, and then Kiefer Rawlings as well. Be a payoff pitch here to Kiefer Rawlings, the three two. Plunked him on the back. It was a breaking ball that did not break. And Rowlings is aboard. He's yet to lift the bat off his shoulders, and he's been on base twice, once via walk, and now via hit by pitch. And this sends up Evan Klugerman. He's taking another look. It's just a breaking ball that did not break. You know, it is really hot outside. Might have some extra perspiration on those fingertips. Can't get that break that you want on the baseball. But if you're going to get hit by a pitch, Brennan, better get hit with a, a secondary pitch than a blistering fastball because King can throw hard. Yeah, and that's frustrating. Again, he, he gives up the homer, comes back, gets two quick outs, and now you've got another man on base. You have to keep laboring here in this half inning. Breaking ball to Klugerman drops in for a strike. He lofted one, two. Dead center field his first time up. Evan Klugerman split time with John Mayer last year as the catcher for Bucknell, but he has been the undisputed everyday catcher for the Bucknell Bison. Bounces one fouled in the first baseline. I talked to Coach Heather earlier this week. I said, how'd you find a guy like Evan Klugerman, who's from Weston, Florida? He said, I saw him at a summer showcase camp in South Florida. He was actually sitting right next to Greg Desenzo when he was watching Klugerman play. He fell in love with him, but he was a bit worried how he would be able to lure Evan Klugerman from South Florida, Central PA. Usually it's the other way around. You're from the north, you want to go south. But Klugerman's not too big of a hot weather guy. He wanted to get away, build his own identity, and he loves Bucknell, a high academic guy, wants to be a GM when he grows up. And he does a great job of handling this Bucknell pitching staff. And oh yeah, he can swing an aluminum stick too. It'll be a one-two here to the lanky lefty. Curveball hammered through the right side for a base hit. Good job by Rowlings to askew the ball to avoid being hit. Otherwise, the inning would have been over. Well, two out rally brewing here for the Bison. Two on, two out. Already leading one nothing. Looking for more with Luke Hartman making just his eighth start of the year at the plate. Here's another look at this good piece of hitting. It was an outside pitch. <laughs> and yeah, you caught it there, Justin. Rawlings hopping out of the way. If King, if King looks back on this start, and now he's going to get a visit from Greg DeCenso, who comes out to talk with the pitchers. There's no change coming. No warming in the bullpen for Holy Cross. But this might be the inning where he sort of looks back and sort of gets frustrated with himself because he's got those two outs after the homer and now he's got two consecutive base runners. Greg Desenzo also serves as the team's pitching coach. So it's always kind of tricky like you alluded to. Is he going to take out the pitcher? Is he not? Obviously uh, way too early in the game to take out uh, your top starter, a two-time all-league performer in Brendan King. But this is a pivotal juncture here. You know how locked in Van Hoos is. Nine up, nine down. You can't let this deficit balloon any larger. Hartman struck out swinging his first time up. One of four strikeout victims for Brendan King, the senior from Massachusetts, the math major. First pitch to the freshman from Birmingham, Alabama, Luke Hartman. Fastball inside, Cal 1-0. Hartman's best performance this year was a midweek game at Penn State. Picked up three hits against a Big Ten foe. Bucknell would go on to lose that game played very well despite the loss and he's caught the eye of the coaches two on pretty curveball dropped in for a strike count levels King a career 2.31 ERA in four career Patriot League tournament games through nine innings of one run baseball last year in the Patriot League championship game against Navy that's a slider down and in, and I think the battery May Wojtek was crossed up. The runners advanced to second and third on that wild pitch, and they want to have a mound visit. I think Wojtek was expecting a fastball, and it was just a breaking ball, and he wasn't ready to put his mitt down in time. That's huge because now a single could play two runs. 
Yankees. No question. The two outs and the runners going on contact. Can the freshman deliver? Making the spot start in place of the struggling Wensig. There were two outs, nobody on. A hit by pitch and a single, a wild pitch. The 2 1. Bounced foul. Deuces are wild here at Hanover Insurance Park at Fridden Field, a venue that opened up way back in 1905. Obviously, they've made some renovations over the last century, but beautiful facility, one of the best places to play baseball in the prestigious Patriot League at Fridden Field. The 2 2. And King steps off. Heather will be aggressive. He's a head coach that coaches third base. Anything in the outfield, I think Klugerman's going to try and score. The 2 2. Bouncer foul will do it again. Another mature at bat from a freshman here. We saw that from John Paul Bell early on in the second inning. A nine pitch at bat. And Hartman is making. King work here in the fourth. The DH. King wants Voigt to go through the secondary signs with Klugerman on second. The 2 2. Another curveball bounce foul into the Bison dugout. Waiting to tow the rubber, it's Connor Van Hoos who's been perfect through three. Will he have a one nothing lead or will he have more? Kings up over 65 pitches already. And that second inning really hurt him. 26 pitches, although he limited the damage. He's trying to survive unscathed here. The 2-2. Two -two. Fastball up, count three and two. Overall, it's a pretty tight strike zone from James Albert. Do have first base open, but Chucky Scales looming on deck. Do you want to go after Hartman here? Hartman, which is two RBI in the season. He can get two RBI with one swing of the bat. What a spot for the rookie. Deep breath from Hill. Got him. Nice job of bearing down by Brendan King. He was king of the hill in that at bat. Through three and a half from Hanover Insurance Park at Fit and Field. Bucknell leads one nothing thanks to Sam Clark's team leading seventh home run of the season. More ahead on the Patriot League Network, powered by Campus Insiders. The undisputed team leader for the Holy Cross College Crusaders is one of 10 finalists for the Senior Class Award. Three-time All-League first baseman, Anthony Cristelli, Brennan, he can really do it all, flash leather and swing the aluminum bat. Yeah, Cristelli's undoubtedly been the leader of this team, and one word that Coach Tessenso has used multiple times, he's a trailblazer for this program. Uh, he just has that great charisma about him as far as his, his way to stay loose. He's strong at the plate. I mean, he's 6'4", 225, but he gets it done in the classroom as well, and there's no better athlete for Holy Cross to have someone that can accomplish both things at the same time. And that class candidate, by the way, represents community, class, and that by that meaning classroom, character, and competition. And he's displayed all of those over his four years. The winner of the 10 finals will be announced in next month's College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska, at TD Ameritrade Ballpark. Brett Smith, Bucknell center fielder, also one of the 10 finalists as Connor Van Hoos armed with a lead thanks to the Sam Clark home run last inning. It's 1-0 Bucknell. Great to be alongside Brendan King. Uh, Brendan Glesheen, excuse me, I'm Justin Antwell. I wouldn't mind taking <laughs> the resume of Brendan King. That, that's fine by me. It's a 2-1 one, one count, count here to the leadoff batter for the uh, Holy Cross College Crusaders. It's, it is 1-1 one one, uh, to Josh Hassell. Lost one foul behind home play. Now Hassell will have to battle with two strikes. He bounced out to third. All right. 
Second time for the order here. You know Van Hoos is dotting his fastball. You know the slider's there. Time for Holy Cross to make some adjustments. You would think so. But he just seems so locked in. He knows how to mix things up. The 2-2. Two -two. Check swing found to the netting behind home play. Nearly hit him, either on the sternum or, or the chin. But it was fouled in the netting behind home play. He swung, so even if he was hit, the swing overrides uh, the hit by pitch. Take another look. Where could it have gotten him? Kind of an awkward looking at bat right there. Just a desperation hack. 2-2 two -two the count. Nobody out, nobody on. Bottom four, the 2-2. Two -two. Pulled an outside pitch to third. Clark across the diamond, one away. Pitching coaches will tell you the most important half inning is the ensuing half inning after your team gives you a lead. And that's the occasion here for Connor Van Hoos trying to quickly put up a zero. He's at just 46 pitches through three and a third innings. Just one thing we want to mention here before we forget, we mentioned that those senior class candidates, well, the, the other one is, is Navy. Navy's mm -hmm. got one as well, one of the three, uh, part of that trio of the Patriot League out of the 10 finalists. Navy's Adrian Chinnery is also representative. So good to see three different schools have representatives, and hopefully uh, they've got a 33% chance it's coming <laughs> out of the Patriot League uh, down in Omaha. Chinnery, the outstanding catcher for the mids. We saw his career sadly come to an end last weekend against the Bison. 1-0 to the righty Schlitsch. Lined in the left field, there's a base hit. First base runner for the Holy Cross College Crusaders. A wide banana turnaround first, but he'll pump the brakes right there. And now let's see how Connor Van Hoos does as he pitches from the stretch. Great job by Schlick. You know, the curveball has been so tough to figure out out of Van Hoos. So anytime you get a fastball, whether it's early in the count, unlikely late in the count, the way these Crusaders hitters have been fooled these last handful of innings, Go after the high fastball, and he ripped it, turned it inside out, and went to his pole side. Van Hoos faced just two over the minimum last weekend against Navy in that complete game. Jem in game one of the semifinals allows his first base runner. And now Klugerman wants a pump-up talk with Connor Van Hoos. A lot of people were wondering how would Connor Van Hoos fare last week as he was pitching on two weeks rest. You know, immediately after the regular season, Bucknell played Navy. Didn't play a game the next weekend because they had final exams. And then they took on Navy. They only needed two pitchers to win that series. So one of the keys that you and I discussed at the top of the broadcast, uh, Brennan, was can Holy Cross dig into Bucknell's bullpen? It's a solid bullpen, but the problem is they haven't pitched in three weeks, so uh, nobody really knows how they're going to fare. It, there's good things about that, and there's also negative things about that. Liner in the netting behind home plate foul count one and one, but we talked with the coaches during the conference call earlier this week, and they've been uh, doing some scrimmages amongst each other to stay loose, but y you can't simulate championship baseball, can sure, you? Sure, sure. Never mind championship baseball, which is live games right. itself, live competition. It's really an interesting element of this weekend. If indeed Bucknell has to go to its bullpen, how will those arms look? Van Hoos at just 50 pitches in great shape through 101 last weekend. Curveball high, laboring a bit. Count two and one to Austin Mazel. And it's quite the opposite for Holy Cross. They have a great option uh, at the back end of the bullpen in George Capen, who is an all Patriot League selection. And he threw over three innings last weekend to close out that semifinal in impressive fashion, earned the win. The 2 1 here to the rookie of the year. Lying into the netting behind home plate. Kind of level at 2 and 2. Mazel, a 3 15 hitter. Fourth in the team in homers. Third in the team in RBI. One of three Crusaders to start all 46 games this season. Facing a first team all league pitcher in Connor Van Hoos. One on, one out. The 2 2. Looper down the left field line kicks foul. And we'll do it again. You mentioned how most head coaches, pitching coaches, you know, get out there, shut down inning after getting a lead. Well, for Holy Cross, if Van Hoos keeps rolling like this, this might be your best chance. Middle of the order coming, just one man out. You have a base runner, the tying run. Time now to strike. 
Quick glance over to check on Schlick over at first. Has just two steals and three attempts. It's a Holy Cross team that does not swipe bags at all. They have the fewest stolen bases in the Patriot League, just 17 all year. Army had 100 this year. Let's put, the, put that in perspective. The 2-2, two -two, lazy fly ball, foul set at third. Sam Clark with a six-foot-six six frame, hovers near the railing and makes the grab near the camera well. Two away. This will send up the aforementioned Anthony Critelli. No better crusader you want at the plate than this stud from Homedale, New Jersey. Critelli from New Jersey, like you mentioned, he played three years at Christian Brothers Academy. He spent his high school days. And that's really, really defined himself as a cornerstone type player for a program at this level. First pitch strike, count 0 and 1. Had a great summer in the Cape Cod League. That's the most prestigious summer wooden bat league uh, there is for college student athletes. And there's definitely a chance he could be drafted come June 12th next month. There are 40 rounds. If you want to talk about character, well, Cretelli has it. Helps out at Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Runs a free baseball camp for children of military veterans. Snap through it on the first. Diving back just in time. It was Schlitt. Cougarman will keep you honest back there. Good job by Rafferty to sneak behind Schlitt at first. We saw Critelli with a huge two-run single. Holy Cross was down 4-1 in the eighth inning in game two last weekend against Army. Sliced it through the right side. Made it a one-score game. Holy Cross would take the lead on the very next batter as that's a fastball that plunks Fratelli on the left elbow. He'll advance to first. Take another look at that pitch, just up and in, gets away from Van Hoos. Fratelli, no arm guard, he's a tough guy. He'll take his base. But he'll pass the baton to Cam O'Neill. Brennan, he hits 396 with runners in scoring position. One of the more clutch Crusaders. That's the predicament here. First pitch snaps in for a called strike. Count 0-1 to a former Patriot League Rookie of the Year. His junior season leads the team in RBI. Leads the team in home runs. Schlitt runs well at second. The 0-1 from Van Hoos. Fastball high, one and one. Cam O'Neill had a monster April series against Bucknell. Two homers, six runs batted in. His on-base percentage up over 600. Problem for this Bison pitching staff. The one, one. There's a hittable pitch that O'Neill takes. Count pushes to one and two. And O'Neill's signature moment this year, other than his three-run home run last weekend to jumpstart the party in game one against Army, he had a walk-off home run against the reigning Patriot League champs Navy, the first league season, uh, the first uh, league weekend play of the year. And that really set the tone for Crusaders in league play to earn the two seed. Count two and two. One more ball, and the runners will get a head start. O'Neill's reached base in 10 straight games. He struck out his first time up. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out with some high heat. And Van Hoos works in and out of trouble. Four in the books from Hanover Insurance Park at Fit and Field. It's 1-0. The visitors lead the homestanding squad right here on the Patriot League Network, powered by Campus Insiders. Gorgeous evening in Worcester, Massachusetts at Hanover Insurance Park at Fit and Field. Four in the books in game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. Bucknell leads Holy Cross 1-0 thanks to Sam Clark's team-leading seventh home run of the season. Great to be alongside by Brennan Glasheen. I'm Justin Antwell. Winner to the NCAA Tournament this weekend. Bucknell trying to win their seventh Patriot League title. 
And Holy Cross looking for their first NCAA tournament bid since 1978. The man to try and get him to the promised land, it's head coach Greg Desenzo, a two-time Patriot League Coach of the Year. This is Holy Cross's fifth championship is, uh, series appearance in the last eight years. And this is a team, Brennan, that really embodies their head coach, that, that tough blue-collar mentality. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, when he – and you've touched on this throughout the game today about recruiting and the types of guys he wants in the building. He's gotten the most out of this team. I mean, they've been a step. They've been an inning. They've been a run. They've been a sack fly away from winning this championship. And last year r really paints the picture as far as what's happened over the last 10 years. Three one-run games in the championship series. One goes to extra innings. I mean, it can't get any closer than that. They were all close games. Great pitching mm -hmm. games, uh, great pitchers' duels, and some timely hitting. I mean, that championship series last year down in Annapolis had everything you could be looking for. The nine-hole hitter, Chucky Scales, is behind in the count. One and two. And he swings on top of a breaking ball. Brendan King tallies his sixth strikeout of the evening. One away here in the fifth. The lineup flips over for Bre Brett Smith, who's been a victim of the strikeout twice tonight in the same pitch. That slider down away has really fooled Bucknell's all-time hits leader. Yeah, four of the strikeouts for King have come. That put-away pitch has been the breaking ball. Brett Smith, the mechanical engineering major, takes a first pitch, called the strike count 0-1. You talked about it his last time up, 190th consecutive start. That was almost in jeopardy in a regular season game against Lafayette. He bunted a pitch, and the ball popped up against his nose. Everybody thought it might have been a broken nose. He was bleeding profusely. Uh, Fafa, the athletic trainer, had to tend to Brett Smith for about 10 minutes, ended up staying in the game. They clogged up his nose with some tissues, and uh, it was a bit swollen the next day, but he said there was nothing that was taking him out of that lineup. Waste pitch way high. Count one and two. And thankfully it wasn't <laughs> serious enough to keep him out of the lineup because I think just from a comfort standpoint, for anyone else to hit leadoff and play in center, it would just be very obscure for Bucknell. And Bucknell only has seven seniors, but they mean so much to this program, particularly the top three in the lineup. I mean, they were kind of the uh, the footnote last week, and they deserved a lot of praise, but the headliner was, of course, Van Hoos and Castellani with complete game gems. But if you weren't paying attention, the top three hitters in the order, all seniors, combined for 10 hits and five RBI against a great Navy pitching staff. 2-2 two -two the count here to Smith. At this point, I think he's just hoping to put the ball in play. You've got, a, you're, you've got the lead here if you're Bucknell, so it's only a one-run lead. It's nothing to be too comfortable with. He's a 387 hitter to lead off an inning, and he was down in the count, Brennan, 0-2, and he's worked it full, 3-2. This is a textbook leadoff hitter kind of at bat. Brendan King's only walked one. That was a key for Rawlings walk. That was when he was ahead in the count as well. And he lost Rawlings. The payoff pitch. Dots the inside corner. The hat trick of strikeouts for Brett Smith. An atypical performance from the two-time All-League selection. And back-to-back -back Ks for King to start this frame. Two away. Take another look at that pitch. It was two sliders that, that uh, fooled Smith his first two times up. And then it was the fastball. So Smith is just not seeing the, well, seeing the ball well out of King's hands. Well, here's Danny Rafferty. He's pulled two outside pitches to second base. 319 hitter. Ball's behind the count early. Coach Heather said he wouldn't be surprised if Rafferty has to pitch this week and hasn't pitched since April 9th. It's been a while. But he was drafted as a pitcher, has a good arm, and another bouncer to second. It'll be a quick 1-2-3 inning as Rafferty flings his bat in frustration. We're halfway through this game one affair. one nothing. Bucknell leads Holy Cross. Game one of a best of three series. We got a good one here in Massachusetts. More ahead on the Patriot League Network, powered by Campus Insiders. Halfway through this game one contest at Hanover Insurance Park at Fit and Field, one nothing. Bucknell leads Holy Cross. Great to be alongside my good pal, Brennan Glasheen. I'm Justin Answell. Difference in this one, Sam Clark, the third baseman's team leading seventh home run. This season, perfect summer weather. Leading things off for the Holy Cross College Crusaders, it's Thomas Russo. He's one of four strikeout victims for Connor Van Hoos, 
who had to labor a bit in the fourth inning, but ended up working out of some trouble after he was perfect his first three frames. He's rolled, he's got ahead, and he's using his pitches, and there you go. A curveball to lead off the at bat. I mean, he's mixing and matching. Not predictable by any means. Connor Van Hoos, last 20 innings pitched. He's allowed just one run. Dialed in. The 0 1. Fastball away. Count 1 and 1 has a 1 1.87 ERA in league play. Tops in the Patriot League in strikeouts. Opponents hit just 221 against him. Has that bulldog mentality. The 1 1 to Russo. Good job by Kluberman to catch that in the black part of the plate. Count 1 and 2. Buck now trying to become just the third four seed to ever capture a Patriot League thir tournament crown since the format went to four teams in 2008. Slice in the left center field. John Paul Bell fights the sun to make an over-the-shoulder catch like a wide receiver. He looked like his cousin, Ty Montgomery, ranging out in left center field to make a catch like a wide receiver. Take another look. Bell's been positioned very well throughout this contest. Gets a good read off the barrel of the bat and an over-the-shoulder grab. Good job by Smith to back him up in case that ball scooted past Bell. So a loud out, but an out nonetheless. And there's one out in the bottom of the fifth inning. Alex Wojtek, one of four strikeout victims for Van Hoos, digs in. Wojtek, a senior hitting just 157, but the coaches love his game calling ability has some pop despite the poor average his on base percentage though is 260 his average 157 and that's what you want to see you want to see your OBP about 100 points higher than your batting average that means you know you're doing a good job sticks across the board here one ball one strike one out the pitch curveball hammered in the left field line foul Count one and two. There were some thunderstorms last night right as Bucknell was leaving the facility after their late night practice. But field's in great shape. Hat tip to the grounds crew here at Holy Cross. The one, two. Klugerman tried to frame it to no avail. The yeah, Holy Cross has got to do something as far as you got to find any way you can to get on base here. Chris Helley got hit by a pitch. I mean, you've got to maybe drop a bunt. You've got to do something. The leadoff batters are 0 for 5, and that is the fifth strikeout for Connor Van Hoos. That's that aforementioned wipeout slider. Two away here in the fifth. Van Hoos eyeballing his fourth perfect inning through five. If he can get Kellen McCormick out, the eight-hole hitter, the DH. When you watch this performance, it almost makes you wonder, how did Bucknell end up as the fourth best team in the Patriot League this year when you have a one-two punch in the rotation? Yeah, Bucknell started out league play, taking three of four against Lehigh. And they had a, a tough series against Army where they could have swept them, but they ended up losing three of four. One of the games was 16 to 14, the final. A crazy game. Liner up the middle, backhanded by Rowling. Jump throw, unable to pick by Rafferty. That'll be a base hit for Kellen McCormick. First off, what a great job by Van Hoos just to get out of the way. That was a screaming line drive back to the pitcher. Good range by Rowlings. That's a pickable ball for a senior Rafferty. It's not an error, but that, that you got to make that pick. Great job. He's getting down for dear life. Here's another look at it. Good job by Rowlings, right? I mean, that's some nice range. Normally the DH, but Raff has got to pick that. It's obviously a tough play, so... That should be a base hit. Uh, we'll see how they officially score. Nothing's been flashed yet. Wow, that's an error. I'm not sure if that's an error on Raff or Rawlings. Probably Raff, but that's a tough error. That was not a routine play. First pitch in for a called strike. Count 0-1. Although if any runs score, that means they'd be unearned, so it wouldn't affect Van Hoos' ERA. But he's not one of those guys that cares about his personal stats. The 0-1. Looper down the right field line foul. Count 0-2, and, and that error is big because what it does is it clears the bottom of the order. So even if, you know, Rinaldi gets out here, you'd have your top of the order leading off the home half of the sixth. 
And again, Holy Cross finds a way to get someone on just to create some sort of disruption in the rhythm of Van Hoos this afternoon. The 0-2. Serving the center. Smith charging in. Lays out. Traps the baseball. Running on contact was Kellen McCormick. He's able to motor into third. Great effort by the defensive player of the year. Well, that's just the second base hit through four and two-thirds innings for the purple and white. The nine-hole hitter comes through. Just kind of sprayed that ball into shallow centers. We take another look. And not trying to do too much. They've kept Smith busy as far as the deeper part of the park. And I only mean that because he's had to help John Paul Bell track down some balls out and left. But anyway, he can. And look, McCormick was off because there was two outs, so he gets all the way down to third. And you give, you give Hassell a chance here. Hassell hits 342 with runners in scoring position. That's the situation here in the home half of the fifth. Van Hoos fires in for a called strike. Count 0 and 1. Johnson runs behind Van Hoos to back up the throw in case Klugerman's toss of the pitcher goes awry. Big spot here, as you mentioned, Brennan. Huge opportunity for the leadoff hitter. It was 0 for 2 with two bouncers to third base. And the old fake to third, look over to first play. Holy Cross is the fewest stolen bases in the Patriot League. You know, there's always that little league thought of trying getting a run down between first and second long enough, and then the runner from third breaks for home. Dips his back shoulder, pops this up down the right field line. This will kick foul and hit the seats near the entrance plaza. Count pushes to 0-2. Yeah, Van Hoos is inching up on 80 pitches for the outing. But like you mentioned, even Brendan King, the starter for Holy Cross, both exceeded that 100 pitch limit. Not really a limit, I should say, but more just a, that plateau of 100 pitches. And air has prolonged the inning. Men on the corners, two outs, 0-2 count. Good block by Klugerman, and maybe a game-saving block to keep the runner 90 feet away, the tying run. Count one and two. What a stop there by Klugerman. You got to bear down with a runner on third, and you know the pitcher's looking to throw a waste pitch, trying to probably bounce one. Good job by Evan. Big spot here for Holy Cross who cruised in game one last week and against the Black Knights. Took a lead in the first inning, never looked back. Playing from behind here. The one, two, the runner goes low in the dirt and Klugerman will let Rinaldi take second base. That takes away the force out and more importantly now a single. And look who'd be in front, Holy Cross. And it's such a big spot that Klugerman wants to calm down his ace. Give him a pep talk here. I mean, look, his stuff's been good all the way through, even despite this prolonged inning. Hassell, a very patient hitter, leads the team in walks with 20, was down in the count 0-2, Tulsa, Oklahoma native. Runners on second and third, two outs. Bucknell clinging to a 1-0 lead, bottom of the fifth. And Van Hoos steps off. He got great speed on the base pass. Outfield straight away. Infielders have to knock anything down. The 2-2. Spun foul behind home plate. That's what you call an emergency hack. Just flinging the bat to stay alive. One in at bat by the senior, one of 13 on this roster, trying to take Holy Cross to a place where they haven't been since 1978. Been almost 40 years since they've been to the NCAA tournament. This is game one of a three game set. The 2-2, slider away, three and two, a professional at bat. Down in the count, worked it full. They do have first base open. But Schlitz on deck. He broke up the perfect game. 
in the fourth inning. Van Hoos has allowed just one run in his last 20 and two-thirds innings. The payoff pitch, the 3-2. Looper into left field for a base hit. McCormick scores, rounding third and heading for home. It's Rinaldi, he scores as well. And the Crusaders bench erupts down the third base line. They catapult in front to take a 2-1 lead. What an at-bat. They're fired up. And Rafferty unable to pick that ball. It was real large. Take another look. What a pesky at-bat. Well, Inside-out swing, flick of the wrist in shallow left field. Bell did everything he could, but easily scoring from second, going on contact. Rinaldi, and how big is that stolen base? That looms real large as well, Brendan. Yeah, pitch in the dirt, and you swipe second, put yourselves in, in scoring position, and then it's interesting because uh, Hassell is obviously, being a leadoff hitter, you're not relying on him to drive and runs uh, for most of the year, and that time he comes through with a clutch hit. It, speaking to that, theme of not trying to do too much and Holy Cross is taking advantage. Now those are two un unearned runs so they don't go against Connor Van Hoos's meticulous 1.87 ERA but that hurts Bucknell on the scoreboard. They trail 2-1 here in the bottom of the fifth. Have to limit the damage. Schlitt the left fielders one for two. We're over to check on Hassell at first and Hassell has that propensity to be clutch. You know, a 342 hitter with runners in scoring position. That'll go up after that huge two run go ahead knock. Another throw over to check on Josh Hassell, who leads the team in stolen bases with just four. Shows you how few times Holy Cross steals bases. Just 17, now 18 swipes all year after that stolen base by Rinaldi. This ball's cranked to center. Should be playable for Brett Smith. Went in, now camps under it and makes the catch. But the damage certainly done. A huge error leads to two runs. Crusaders jump in front to take a 2-1 lead over the Bison through five innings of play from Hanover Insurance Park at Fit and Field. More ahead on the Patriot League Network, powered by Campus Insiders. 2-1, Holy Cross leads Bucknell through five innings of play in game one of this best of three series, the Patriot League Championship Series. The Bucknell Bison are led by fifth-year head coach Scott Heather, the 42-year-old from St. Paul, Minnesota, has been with the organization and program for 13 years, was an outstanding pitcher in the SEC for the Arkansas Razorbacks, and he was able to upset Army, his squad last week, uh, upset Navy last week, and it was the first time uh, this year that a number one seed is not in the Patriot League uh, championship series since 2010, thanks to the four seed pulling off the upset. Well, Bucknell finds itself down 2-1. Great to be alongside Brennan Glasheen. I'm Justin Antwell. Sam Clark, who homered his last time up, jumps in the first pitch, pulls it to first base for the ground out. And there's one away in the top of the sixth inning. So now it's Brennan King, who's armed with his first lead, and he's looking to put up a zero. Yeah, you said it there, Justin. I mean, getting a shutdown inning after a two-run single, especially when both runs go unearned, you really catch a break against a really solid pitcher in Connor Van Hoos. Bucknell actually trailed against Navy 1-0. They gave up a run in the top of the eighth inning last weekend in game one. In the next half inning, they would go on to score five runs. So it's a, a very resilient Bucknell team who's got 11 more outs to play with. Luke Johnson has one of the three Bucknell hits. Grew up in Massachusetts. Curveball high, count one and one. Johnson hits just 161 his first two years, but he's blossoming his junior campaign, batting 278 this year. Had a huge go-ahead grand slam against Army in the regular season, and that one swing of the bat really turned his season around. Sometimes that's all it takes in baseball. You know, you can be struggling. You have one really good hit. It gets your confidence going. It's a, look, it's a game of failure. If you fail seven out of ten times, you're successful when you hit 300. But Johnson's done a nice job at shortstop. The 2-1. Hit down the right field line. He moved to Chicago when he was in middle school. And 
He did admit that he jumped on the Cubs bandwagon last fall when they snapped their 108-year World Series drought. He's a Red Sox fan, but he, he liked the Cubs last year. Well, how could you not? Yeah, it's not a bad spot to be in. The 2-2 here to Johnson. One out in the six. Bison down a run. Flares at this one. Saws it off foul. It's just interesting. You, you look at Brendan King's body language in this half inning. Extremely different, you know, from that last inning. Very free and easy. Understands he's got a lead now. He wants to command the zone. He probably has a lot of, of that lead or that once... Bucknell lead, he probably feels a lot of that was on his shoulders, just as any starter would. Connor Van Hoos is probably thinking the same despite that error. 2-2. Two -two. Looper in the right field and on the run to make the catch. It's the Holy Cross right fielder snaring that one. It was Josh Hassel who had the go-ahead two-run single last half inning. Darts inward to make the grab. Here's John Paul Bell. John Paul Bell's probably seen about 15 pitches today, but has nothing to show for it. It's a fly ball to right, and a weak ground ball to first. Jumps on that first pitch, hammers into left center field, and uh, attempting to make the grab, it's the left fielder, but Bell will motor in a second with a stand up two out double. So nice effort out there by Bill Schlitt, but now it's time for Bucknell to mount a two out rally. And here's Kiefer Rawlings, a 316 hitter with runners in scoring position this year. Let's take another look at that good opposite field piece of hitting by John Paul Bell. Schlitt lays out, but not enough hang time to make the grab. Good job of the center fielder, Mazel, to back him up, not be lazy. So Bell runs well at second, 180 feet away, representing the tying run for Rawlings, who's worked a full count walk and been hit by a pitch via a curveball on his back. Maryland native, jumps on the first pitch, hammers it deep down the right field line. If it's fair, it's trouble. This will kick foul near the Holy Cross football field. Count 0-1. Shows you the kind of power and top spin that Rowlings can generate. Didn't even square that one up, and that ball just kept kicking foul about 300-plus feet away. Yeah, the wind carrying out to right center, so not a bad idea to go the other way. That was sort of the approach Johnson took. And then Bell decided to go to left center field. Had enough meat on that pitch. And if your name's Kiefer Rawlings, I mean, you have to be a good baseball player. I mean, Rawlings makes baseball gloves for a living. Low and away, count one and one. Rawlings was a great football player, though, in high school. Has those big, broad shoulders. He credits Cody Miller, Bucknell strength and conditioning coach, for his vast adjustments and maturity this year. Really hit the weight room hard over the off season. You could just tell. He just completely looks different in terms of body type. His confidence is up. Hitting 30 points higher this year than he did his first two years combined. In a big spot. Team's down a run. Sixth inning in game one against a two-time first team all-league pitcher and Brandon King. High bouncer to second. This will be a tricky hop. It's gloved though and played well. A two out double proves to be harmless. Five and a half in the books from Hanover Insurance Park at Fit and Field. Holy Cross maintains their 2-1 lead. Back with more in 90 seconds on the Patriot League Network powered by Campus Insiders. Five and a half innings complete here in Worcester, Massachusetts. 2-1 Holy Cross leads Bucknell in game one of this best of three Patriot League Championship Series. The winner of this weekend set advances the NCAA tournament. There are two stars on each squad here playing this weekend. Anthony Critelli for Holy Cross, Brett Smith for Bucknell. They are two of 10 finalists for the Senior Class Award, an award based on achievements in the community, classroom, character, and competition. Congratulations to those two gentlemen. The winner will be announced next month at the College World Series at TD Ameritrade Ballpark. First pitch low and away, count one and oh. Each have been great representatives for their respective universities. Brett Smith is Bucknell's all-time hits leader. Anthony Critelli is second all-time in Crusader history and home runs. Great to be alongside Brennan Glasheen. I'm Justin Antwell. 
Fouled off behind home plate for Austin Mazel. Count one and one. Fantastic production crew we have on hand for you all weekend. Executive producers Jimmy Johnson and Chris Bacherani. Director Zach Hazley on camera. Justin Moore, Jamie Reynolds, Jason Clark, Priscilla Suero, and our SIDs Matt Torres and Greg Salona. So lazy fly ball to left. One-handed grab for John Paul Bell. And there's one away here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Connor Van Hoos looking to bounce back after he surrendered two unearned runs in uh, the bottom of the fifth inning. Anthony Critelli, the aforementioned stud first baseman, will bat. He's 0 for 1 with a hit by pitch. Picked up three RBI in the semifinals, sweep over Army last weekend. This is a rematch of the 2010 championship series where it was the three-seed Holy Cross and the four-seed Bucknell battling it out here in Massachusetts. And it was Holy Cross who won game one, but then Bucknell had that counter punch to win in game two to even up the series and then win the decisive game. Yeah, and funny enough, that was the last time a one-seed wasn't in the championship <laughs> game or the championship series. Count quickly 0-2. We discussed this off the air coming into the game, the parity in the league. There's just a – you really never know every year. If you get in that final four, give yourself the weekend and take Bucknell, for example, being in this spot, beating a, t a team that no one thought would be stopped this year down in Annapolis in the Navy midshipmen. It'll be a 1-2 here to Critelli. Van Hoos eyeballing a seventh strike at his Critelli calls time. I mean, you're right. There's so much great parity in this league. Think about the final weekend of the regular season – Holy Cross could have been as high as a one seed or as low as a, a five seed and out of this tournament. Same thing for Bucknell. They had a chance to win the regular season. They could have been a five seed as well and out of the tournament. But they end up getting the four seed, sneaking in just past Lehigh. Holy Cross, despite the fact that they lost three or four to Lafayette, was able to get some help that they needed from other teams in the league. The one, two pounds into the netting behind home plate. We'll do it again. As the home plate umpire, James Albert, Asked for a fresh set of white pearls. One run on four hits for Bucknell. Two runs on three hits for Holy Cross. None bigger than the two-run single with two outs by Josh Hassell. Chris Critelli gets under it. Hangs it up in the right field area for Chucky Scales to haul it in. There's two away. Now batting Cam O'Neill, who's 0 for 2 with two Ks. Van Hoos threw 101 pitches last week, and he, he probably can throw about 120 to 125, knowing that he will not pitch if Bucknell wins this series until two weeks from now when the regional play gets underway. Exactly two weeks from today. Swing and a miss, count 0-1. There is some activity, though, in the Bison bullpen. Looks like Jack Simpson is warming up. Holy Cross pen is still dormant. Curveball outside. Count one and one. Two outs, nobody on. Two one, Crusaders lead Buck now. The one one. Pops out of Klugerman's mitt, still called a strike. Count one and two. Connor Van Hoos has only yielded one earned run his last three starts. Can his offense pick him up? Little dribbler down the first baseline. Klugerman touches it foul. Count one and two. Last time Bucknell made the NCAA tournament 2014. They ended up going to Charlottesville, Virginia for a regional. A 1-2, it's bounced to short. Johnson Fields fires, ends the inning. Two-thirds of the way through this game one contest. 2-1, Holy Cross leads Bucknell. Seventh inning coming up from sunny Worcester, Massachusetts on the Patriot Network, powered by Campus Insiders. 2-1, Holy Cross leads Bucknell through six innings of play. Taking you through the ninth inning, it's Brandon Glasheen. 
Thank you, Justin. Start of the seventh inning, and of course, what's at stake in this one? Never mind a Patriot League championship, the first for Holy Cross, the seventh for Bucknell in their program histories, but a chance to play in the NCAA tournament, a regional performance would be a thrill for two senior classes, a seven-man class for Bucknell, 13 for Holy Cross. That would air at noon on May 29th, ESPN, carrying the entire College World Series. D1Baseball.com, they do a great job of covering college baseball year. Writers Kendall Rogers and Aaron Fitt, they, in their latest projections that aired on, uh, came out on Monday, they had Holy Cross going to the Chapel Hill Regional. So that would be a, a fun tree. Look, I don't care where, the players don't care where they're going to go. If they're in the NCAA tournament, everybody would be smiling ear to ear, and they'd have a couple weeks off to, to gear up for that play. And Brennan, when you look at both teams, I think they're built for serious May and June baseball because they have a couple strong pitchers and some timely hitting. Brendan King back on the rubber for the start of the seventh. First pitch strike. To Klugerman, the catcher. Slicer makes it 0-2. Klugerman, one for two today. Base hit in the fourth. And he flew to center in the second. Had five hits last week, and he's really come on strong into the sophomore year. Goes the other way once more, this time a fair ball. So Klugerman stays hot, two-hit game, seven hits in this Patriot League tournament, just a three-game sample. Just the second time in seven innings, the Bison have the leadoff man aboard. As you take another look at this swing from Klugerman, just serves it out in the left field. Good job on taking a change of the outside part of the plate the other way. And you could have a bunt situation here for Luke Hartman. King is approaching 100 pitches. Bullet on the inside edge for strike one to Luke Hartman. He did not square around. He looks over at Scott Heather, who's flashing the signs at third base. Some throwing begins in the Holy Cross bullpen down the left field line. Another check at first base. Brendan King was an all Patriot leaguer last year, not selected this season. But he is extremely passionate about his senior year, as is Anthony Critelli, his teammate that plays first and they're both on record. We've been thinking about this opportunity to be back in the championship series since we lost last May to Navy. Grounder up the middle, O'Neal will take it himself. His throw to first in time. Two quick outs for King and the Crusaders. That's the second time in as many at-bats that Hartman's had a chance to really get a clutch hit. Had had first and second, two outs his last time up, struck out, and then Coach Heather, he gives him some confidence. He says, you know what, I don't want you to bunt, uh, young man. I want you swinging the bat. He just ends up rolling over a pitch for a twin killer to erase the leadoff single by Evan. Bases clear out for Chucky Sales. Full-time starter this year after being a primary pinch runner for this Bucknell program the last couple of seasons. He is Chuck, Charles Sales, Charles Scales, the third in the family, as the next one is a strike. His father was a football and ba baseball player at Pittsburgh. And his grandfather played football at Indiana. Both have pro football careers. Here's King's 0-2. Scales doesn't chase the high cheese. The father, Charles II, was drafted by the Kansas City Royals, so there was a baseball background. Sun has almost set. Coach Desenzo getting nervous. 2-1 game in the seventh inning. Holy Cross trying to take a commanding 1-0 lead in this series. Don't forget games two and three tomorrow, both nine inning games. Game three, if necessary. Here's King again. Nudge to short. Easy pick. And a nice play by Rinaldi. Brendan King allows a leadoff single. 
out of trouble just like that. Stretch time from Hanover Insurance Park in Worcester, and the Crusaders have a 2-1 lead on the Bison. Make sure you tune in this Saturday, tomorrow, for Game 2, which starts at noon. Game 3, if necessary, in this Patriot League Championship Series, Holy Cross and Bucknell. The Crusaders hold a 2-1 lead as we head into the bottom of the seventh. Connor Van Hoos, the starter for the Bison, still on the mound. He's at 98 pitches. And so far, pretty superb. Both runs unearned. A very unfortunate error back in that fifth inning. That's really hurt Bucknell. Yeah, Danny Rafferty just could not pick a, a backhanded throw by Kiefer Rawlings. Allowed the inning to continue, and Hassell ends up pumping a two-run single in the shallow left field to give Holy Cross the lead, and that's the difference in this game. That erased the Sam Clark solo shot back in the fourth. No walk, six strikeouts for the unanimous all-first-team Patriot League member. Leading the conference in many statistical categories, he's got Russo at the plate, who is 0 for 2 today. Bucknell's bullpen getting busy. George Capen is warming for Holy Cross. Breaking ball, catches the inside edge for a strike. Jack Simpson warming up for the Bucknell Bison. He's a six foot eight right hander. And the one two. Got him swinging with the curve. Strikeout number seven. Klugerman completes the strikeout barely. His throw to Rafferty just got there in time. He was a bit nonchalant there, Brandon. You know, he uh, kind of took his time. A lollipop throw in the first, but Rafferty had to skew the runner and, and step on the bag as you take another look. The ball squirts away momentarily, and Klugerman thinks he has plenty of time. He just kind of lollipop that throw. It was high, and then Rafferty had to race Russo to the bag. Voitich's turn. He's down by way of the K twice for Holy Cross. There's Simpson warming. Wojtyk had a notion, but he takes the strike, one and one. Infield entirely back for this stellar right-hander Van Hoos. And it's popped up on the infield, tough play. It's either Johnson or Clark. Luke Johnson calls off his third baseman, and he makes the grab. Two gone, and credit to Van Hoos. Since that error, yes, he allowed a base hit to Josh Hassell, but he's come in, and he's got five straight outs. He's definitely done a nice job. That's some mental toughness right there by an upperclassman, not letting the error get to him too much, trying to keep this deficit at one trying to give his team a chance because the Bison know the eighth inning might be a better chance, Brennan, than the ninth inning because they have the top of the order coming up next half inning. Right back on the rubber. McCormick reached on that error by the second baseman Rawlings. Sky to right, scales, tracks under, squeezes with two, and the side retired. One, two, three, seventh for Connor Van Hoos. He is showing no signs of slowing down. We head to the eighth inning in Worcester. Hanover Insurance Park, the site for game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. Holy Cross clinging by one run. Beautiful night in the month of May here in Worcester. Top of the eighth inning, Patriot League Championship Series game one. Brendan King with 106 pitches enters the eighth frame. He's getting set to take on the top of the order. Brett Smith, Danny Rafferty, and Sam Clark. This is this is Bucknell's best chance here, Brandon. Fourth time through the order. They've seen King in the regular season. They've seen him so much throughout the years. He's a senior. And this is their best chance. Three seniors, Smith, Rafferty, Clark. Sounds like a law firm, but they're three really good baseball players, too. First three in the order tonight combined one for nine. The one run from Sam Clark, the solo shot in the fourth to give Bucknell a one-nothing lead. And the first fastball sprays wide to Smith. He has struck out three times, twice swinging, one looking. All first team in the league this year. 
Chases the heat that time. He hasn't looked comfortable all day long. I mean, the strikeouts have made him look pedestrian when he is a well above average player. One of the best mid-major players in college baseball. Breaking ball notches in. Holy Cross, after seven innings, they've been great with the lead. Yeah, 10 and one this year. That's a testament to George Cape and if they want to use him, but they're gonna trust a two-time all-league performer in, in their staff base right now. Drop the hammer with the breaking ball. King has been on top of Smith today. Aiming for strikeout number eight in this spot. Couple of wave offs, and he's ready for the 2 2. Fills up. Bucknell's left five on base today. If they end up coming short in this one, they'll look, about, they'll look back at missed opportunities. This is a huge swing pitch here. King's ready. Sliced foul. On deck, Rafferty trying to atone for that error that led to the two unearned runs for the Crusaders back in the fifth inning when he could not pick a ball off a jump throw from Rowlings at second base. Stairs at strike three. There's number four. And Gold. Smith knew it. Golden sombrero for Brett Smith. I mean, those are just two words you never utter. Uh, has to be the first career golden sombrero for Brett Smith. And good job of framing by Wojtek. A borderline pitch, but Smith just doesn't have an argument there. Got to protect the plate with two strikes in, in a close game. So King matches his game one performance against Army with eight Ks today. No walks in that start against the Black Knights. He went seven innings. Here he's allowed just one run with one man out in the eighth. Rafferty takes ball two. Rafferty's 0 for three, and Cam O'Neill better be, better be ready. <laughs> he's taking all three outs. Holy Cross second baseman. And the 2-0. That's strike one. Rafferty, a draft pick of the Oakland Athletics last year, 35th round selection, comes back for his senior year. Bends out of the way of that one, saying something because Bucknell did win the championship in 2014. They're trying to bookend their tenures with the championship in 2017. He had his championship, he wants more. Yeah, it shows the kind of character that Rafferty has. Oh, he looked like he was swinging underwater right there. Brennan just caught him between a weak wave and a miss. And I think it's right now all mental with the Bucknell Bison because King is just fooling him with every pitch in his arsenal. The breaking ball, the changeup, dotting his fastball. The 3-2 pitch is low for ball four. Wow. Very close. Very close. I'm with you right there. That was extremely close. That's a tough take for Rafferty. And this time it's Bucknell that gets the borderline. 50-50 call. And the go-ahead runs to the plate for a man who has an effortless swing in Sammy Clark. But we might have a pitching change here. That is the first walk today for Brendan King. And that will lead to a change on the hill. Yep, he signaled to the pen. What an outing for Brendan King. Bounces back after the home run. Craig DeCenso takes the baseball. George Capen coming in. We'll be back for more action here in the eighth inning. Holy Cross by one in the Patriot League Championship Series Game 1. Patriot League Championship Series Game 1. Our first pitching change today, our first call to the bullpen. George Capen, an all-Patriot League second team member. Outstanding year, over 37 innings on the season. He's made 23 relief appearances. That's third best in the conference. And he's got a 3.58 ERA. He's not a bad option for Holy Cross trying to close the door on games. Looking for the five out save. It'd be his third save of the year. Brennan, he threw three and two thirds innings in game two to propel Holy Cross to this weekend's championship series. Holy Cross got a clutch hit from Anthony Critelli in the eighth inning. 
Take a 5-4 lead, they never look back. Capen holds the school record with 93 career appearances. Peers over his shoulder with Rafferty there. And a strike to Clark. I think it was a wise decision by Coach Asenzo to make a change. He had a full count to Smith, ends up striking him out. A full count to Raff, ends up walking him. And Clark had already taken uh, King deep earlier in this game. That was back in the fourth, the dead center. Clark tags it the other way. It could be trouble. And it falls down for a base hit. Schlick racing for it. The runner on third. Rafferty, the relay. It's short. The throw to the plate. The tag in time. Rafferty ran through the stop sign. He absolutely ran through the stop sign. Heather was sending him, then he held him up late. We'd love to see if we can get a look at that here, Brennan. What a great relay throw from the left field corner to nail Rafferty, who's trying to score it at home plate. Take another look. Just Clark just serving it down the left field line. Take a look at Scott Heather here. He initially is waving Rafferty around. We'll see if we can get an angle on it. Tough to tell on that vantage point. But I was watching it. He originally held him up, and then he went through. The throw from Rinaldi on the money. So Capen catches a break, even though he wasn't responsible for that runner. And now Greg Desenso, who acts as the pitching coach as well for Holy Cross, out to visit with Capen. That was an aggressive send right there by Coach Heather. Could have had second and third, one out for your cleanup hitter. A sack fly could have tied the game. But in baseball, everybody picks each other up. And now it's Luke Johnson's turn to come through. Johnson has been sensational for the Bucknell Bison the last month this season. Here's another look. And the throw on the money, and Wojtek applies the tag, reaching to his left. So Clark hangs out at second. He's the tying run. Did advance there on the play at the plate. And the bender climbs in for a strike to Luke Johnson. Johnson, 20 RBI his last 17 games. He's a 316 hitter with runners in scoring position. Capen with 52 strikeouts this year, fifth in the Patriot League. Johnson's made contact all game long. And Clark doesn't run too well from second, so there's no guarantee he scores even with two outs. Holy Cross has played in nine one-run Patriot League tournament games, and here they are again. PL tournament, one run deficit for Bucknell in this spot. Holy Cross played three one run games in the Patriot League Championship Series last year against Navy. And the Crusaders won one of those games. Capen took the loss in game three of the title series a year ago. Holy Cross, second fewest errors in the Patriot League, have played crisp defense tonight, especially in that relay throw to gun down Raff at the plate. Johnson stares at a ball high. And Keep now a 3 1 pitch. You got you to sit in a fastball. Words exchanged. 3 1 from Capen. Johnson tips it back foul. Now it's full. And we talked about this was going to be the best chance for Bucknell at the top of the order do up this inning. As you creep down this lineup, Lugerman's had a good game. He has a couple of hits. Rawlings has reached base twice. Bottom of the order has worked the count. They did a nice job against King. Capen in relief. Bluffs to second. Capen has seven wins this year. That's tops in the league as well. Finishing a lot of games, whether it's long relief, closing, short relief. He has done everything asked of him. 
High fastball. He pumps the shoulders. Capen is amped. And the Crusaders head to the bottom of the eighth on top, 2-1. Two 2-1 to one. Two -one Holy Cross lead in game one of the Patriot League Championship Series 2017. Justin Antwell and Brendan Glasheen alongside. If this look right here doesn't tell you everything you need to know about championship baseball, I don't know what else will. <laughs> you got to love the emotion. He is fired up, survives for the teeth of the Bucknell order. Strands the tying run in scoring position. A great relay throw from Schlitt out in left field. Nailed Rafferty at the plate. And Bucknell, they're still allergic to their own bullpen here, Brennan. They are still avoiding that bullpen as Counter Van Hoos is over the 100 pitch plateau out to pitch the eighth. He's, as of now, in line for a complete game tough luck loss. That was George Capen, by the way. Holy Cross reliever. Rinaldi sends it into center down for a base hit. The nine hitter is two for three against the unanimous Seoul First League selection in the Patriot League. Great piece of hitting by Rinaldi, jumping on a get me over first pitch fastball, pumping it into right center field. Jack Simpson still warming up down there. Brennan, I think he's thrown like a complete game down there. He's been warming up since about the sixth inning, nonstop. He's a big, strong, durable guy at six foot eight. But they are still sticking with Van Hoos. Deals with Hassell, who was the hero in the fifth. Two run single to give Holy Cross the lead. Pulls the hands back, but the hammer drops in for a strike. And uh, not a bad idea to bunt here at all. I actually like the move. Play for an insurance run. Holy Cross this year, 14 and two when they lead after, uh, or 14 and 0 I should say, excuse me, when they lead after eight innings. Speaks to the lockdown mode that Capen enters out of the bullpen. Holy Cross getting seven and a third out of Brendan King, the starter. Van Hoos, the starter for Bucknell, still in the game. Has to field the bunt. Nope, he will not. Klugerman calls him off, and he gets the sure out at first. Rinaldi advances to second. Sacrifice works as planned for Holy Cross. Nice savvy play by Klugerman. Very aggressive, demonstrably calling off Van Hoos. Came pretty far out of his crouch to field that baseball. Didn't even square up his shoulders as you take another look. This was about midway between the pitcher's mound and home play, like a 30-foot bunt. Klugerman calls off Van Hoos, who eschews Klugerman and throws off bounce to Rafferty at first. And that puts an insurance run in scoring position. And now they have a crack in it with their two and three hitters. And now expected a senior from Massapequa, New York. That's Bill Schlick. And it looks as if Scott Heather will make a change. Jake Simpson enters from the bullpen. Seven and a third for Connor Van Hoos. He leaves with the bases empty. Holy Cross still on top by one run in game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. Back in Worcester, Hanover Insurance Park, the site of game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. Bill Schlick stepping in for Holy Cross with Chris Rinaldi at second, the new pitcher, Jack Simpson, right-hander for Bucknell. His first one skitters back to the net. Rinaldi takes off for third base. And now you got to bring the infield in if you're Coach Heather and the Bucknell Bison. Cut down that insurance run from third with just one out. Simpson, six foot eight freshman from the state of Washington. It is the first time this month that Coach Heather and Jason Knights have dipped into their bullpen. Over three weeks it's been. The last time we saw a Bucknell reliever toe the rubber, April 30th. It's currently May 19th. Remarkable. And the 1 0 sent up the middle on the ground to base hit. Rinaldi taps on home and an RBI single for Bill Schlick. Holy Cross with a two run cushion here in the eighth inning. Big time insurance run for the Holy Cross College Crusaders. That's how you draw it up a single, a sack bunt, take advantage of an unforced error, which is a wild pitch. And then they always say your batting average goes up 100 points when the infield drawn in. And that's the case with Bill Schlick. He becomes about a 400 hitter as he punches it up the gut. Schlick in that series against Army went three for eight with two RBIs. That's his third RBI of the Patriot League tournament. 
Feels like, Justin, the story today for Holy Cross, not trying to do too much, sort of taking advantage of what's been the presented to them here today by the Bucknell side. Mazel steers at the next one, one and one. Yeah, it's an opportunistic bunch. I mean, they've taken advantage of some Bucknell miscues. That error by Rafferty, uh, Rafferty being overly aggressive, trying to score from first. A wild pitch, advances a runner 90 feet, allows a run to score. That's what a team with 13 seniors is going to do to you. They are going to maximize their opportunities against the opposition. And, and in championship baseball, you've been around long enough. It's the little things that are going to make the big time difference. One man out, 3-1 Holy Cross in the eighth. Mazel today is 0 for 3. He is still hitless in this tournament. 0 for 6 against Army in two games. So he's 0 for 9. He led Holy Cross in batting average and runs scored in the regular season, winning, of course, the Patriot League Rookie of the Year. That's the old cliche in these championship series. It's going to be someone you don't expect to come through. High and wide with the fastball, 3-1. and one. Numbers on Simpson, the righty reliever at 1-1, one one, a 4-7-6 ERA. He's just a freshman from Bethesda, Maryland. Pitched at Georgetown Prep in high school. 3-1 is late. Here's the throw down by Klugerman, not in time. So a stolen bag for Bill Schlick. mazel has got a chance to drive him in. Still an impressive throw from Evan Klugerman. Didn't even leave his crouch. That throw was on target. It was clearly a hit and run attempt, so a bit of a late jump for Schlitt at first base. Still able to slide head first into the bag. Another runner in scoring position. Simpson's ready for the 3 2. High chop, Tomahawks foul. You know, we talked about how Coach Heather's racked up some frequent flyer miles to recruit all these players on Bucknell from Florida, Alabama, Jack Simpson from the state of Washington. He actually didn't go out to Washington to recruit him. He found him on a recruiting website and uh, saw his film. He was like, you know what, let me invite this kid to my camp. He came to a Bucknell camp one summer, liked what he saw, liked the potential and the ceiling with him. Two bouncer to first. Rafferty takes it alone. And this is a, a kid in Simpson who has starting potential. I mean, you look at Bucknell next year. I mean, look, nobody's really thinking about next year right now, but worth bringing up, they're going to lose Castellani as you take a look at Rafferty making a nice backhand pick. And I think there's a good chance you could see Simpson be one of those four weekend rotation starters because they'll bring back Grayback and Gottesman and Van Hoos. Another possible insurance run at third base for Anthony Critelli. Mighty cut through that one. Critelli flew to left in the second, hit by a pitch in the fourth, and he skied out to right field in the sixth inning. The 6-8 Simpson home. Got him again with the off speed. And yeah, Gratelli was swinging for his 24th career home run. That would tie him for most in school history. And uh, Greg Desenzo saying, hey, Anthony, calm down right now. You know, you don't need to do too much. You talked about it. That's been the approach all game long for Holy Cross. Hey, flick your wrist there, serve it here, spin it here, take advantage of a miscue there and here. And Gratelli needs to take a deep breath. Cortelli in 11 career Patriot League tournament games, 14 RBI. Looking to drive in number 15, 2 Mashes this pitch into deep right center. There's no chance for scales. Schlick scores. Critelli on his horse to second. He is fired up. A double makes it 4-1 to one Crusaders in the bottom of the eighth. 
And that's just too good of a pitch to throw in an 0-2 count if you're Jack Simpson. And a senior class award finalist is going to take advantage to it. Hey, tip your cap to Coach DeCenzo. Whatever he said to Critelli calmed him down. He shortens up his swing. And that's when Anthony Critelli, Brandon, is doing his best when he's taking the ball the other way. Flashback to last weekend. How did Holy Cross win game two when he flicked his wrist and scooted a two-run single through the right side? He goes to the right center field power alley on that occasion. Six hits apiece on both sides now. Four runs for Holy Cross, one for Bucknell. Cam O'Neill is searching for his first hit. He's 0 for 3 with a pair of strikeouts. Foul ball makes it 1-1. One one. You look back at the game and you, you see the runs here in this eighth inning for Holy Cross that's propelled them, but... Those shutdown innings from Brendan King, even Connor Van Hoos to keep Bucknell in the game. I mean, those performances, uh, those are the things that go unnoticed when you look at the box score. That's a way, two and one. Cam O'Neill, former Rookie of the Year in the Patriot League. Senior has nine home runs, 41 RBI. That's Tops on the Holy Cross squad. Lays off the curve. Simpson staring home. Right center field, the popular spot, but scales camps under it to make the catch. Holy Cross brings in two more in the bottom of the eighth. They'll turn to George Capen to try and close out game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. Crusaders four, Bison one. This is the Patriot League Championship Series powered by the Patriot League Network on campus in Sodders. George Capen on for the ninth for Holy Cross. The Crusaders on top. Two to one, and there's a promising stat for the Crusaders, 14-0 and and leading after eight frames. Bucknell has five, six, and seven expected. John Paul Bell, Kiefer Rawlings, and Evan Klugerman. First pitch, liner up the middle, a base hit. A nice day here, Justin, for John Paul Bell. Doubled in the sixth, he had a really lengthy at bat in the second inning. Granted, he is a five hitter, but he's just a freshman and he's coming on strong here. So mature, he's probably seen about 25 pitches a day in total of his four at bats. And, you know, all of a sudden the tying runs in the on deck circle. Capen is aiming for his third save of the season. He's closed a ton of games for Holy Cross. Talked about the motivation for Holy Cross to get back to the Patriot League Championship. This is their fifth appearance. Over the last eight years, Greg DeCenso in year number 10 is the head coach. There's one guy that's happy to be back here. It's George Capen, who took the loss in game three of last year's championship in game three against Navy. Pitch to Rawlings. He did not hold up. James Albert, the home plate umpire, says that's a strike. Capen went five and two-thirds last year in that start against Navy. So he was a starter a year ago. Four hits, one run. And he walked one. In the stretch, this bullet upstairs. Again, don't forget tomorrow, game two is a noon first pitch. Dials in the fastball on the outer edge, strike two. Mike Castellani is the expected starter for Bucknell. Joe Crevero for Holy Cross. That one-two punch for Bucknell. They might really need the second part to come through should they drop today. This pitch is hit on a line to right center down for a hit. Mazel collects his throw cut off at short. First to third movement there for John Paul Bell and Bucknell's in business, first and third, nobody out, tying run is at the plate. 
And Capens looked human. I know he's a second-team All-League performer. He's faced five batters. He's allowed three hits, two of them extra base hits. That's a sharp single in the right center field alley. Heads up base running by John Paul Bell to pick up Coach Heather at third. Men on the corners, nobody out. Tying run of the plate here in the top of the ninth for Evan Klugerman, who has a pair of dingers this year. Klugerman has seven hits in the Patriot League tournament his sophomore season. Capen really has interest in making this thing interesting. <laughs> Eight hits for Bucknell, just one run to show for it. Flugerman two for three. Wojtek keeps the bender in front for ball one. So Klugerman, as Justin just mentioned, seven hits now in the tournament. He is just a sophomore. He attended Nova Southeastern University. That's a high school in Fort Lauderdale. It's an excellent high school. They've had produced many major leaguers. Alex Fernandez, who pitched on the championship Florida Marlins back in the late 90s is a name that comes to mind. Western Florida is the hometown for Klugerman. Yeah, South Florida, it's a hotbed for talent out there. Football, baseball, the weather's great. They call it the university school <laughs> in front of the Nova Southeastern Park. Sophomore trying to come through here. Tying run is at the plate. Capen misses away. Obviously infield back. You'll gladly take a double play for an out uh, for a run right now if your coach descends though. There's some activity in the Holy Cross bullpen. Play Justin Finnan. Another strike, first strike, I should say, two and one now. Finnan is a righty, senior from Barrington, Rhode Island, loosening for the Crusaders. Pitch missing low once more, three balls and a strike. Lugerman with a practice cut. Capen, a member of this senior class for Holy Cross. The 3-1 is popped up in shallow right. A long run for Hassell, but the second baseman, O'Neill, wanders over to make the grab, and that's a key first out for the Crusaders. Klugerman just got under that high fastball, tried to turn on it. Couldn't quite drive the ball. Lazy fly ball to shallow right, one away. So now it's Luke Hartman's turn. One man out. Breaking ball for a strike. It was Hartman who banged into a crucial double play to stall the rally in the seventh. The double play here ends this game one. Middle infield pinching inward. Uses the fastball for a strike and the Holy Cross fans in attendance showing life in this ninth inning. Hartman had just eight games of experience coming in here. Check swing, he did go around. First strike three. Two down for Capen and the Crusaders. Scott Heather with some words for James Albert at home plate. He wanted at least some help on that check swing. He thought that Albert didn't have the best of angles to say Hartman went around to no avail. It's all up to the nine hole hitter, Chucky Scales. Scales is 0 for 3. He struck out twice to Brendan King, and he bounced out to shortstop in the seventh. Capen's got that fireball mentality, but he's been a very versatile reliever for the Crusaders. It is 1 0. The bender screeches inside. Two balls and no strikes. The first two reached for Bucknell. A couple of hits from Bell at third, Rawlings at first, but back-to-back -back outs recorded by Capen. Break, break, break. 
every single player on both dugouts standing close to the doorstep. Fires a strike. The Crusaders looking to take a commanding lead. They've never won a Patriot League championship. Liner down the left side, pulls foul. And Bucknell is down to its final strike. Over 50 strikeouts this year for Capen. 2-2. Blazed foul. Leave uh, it to Scales. He's a feisty hitter. He makes contact at the very least. And if he can just pass the baton to Brett Smith on deck, I know Smith has the golden sombrero, but you always have to feel confident no matter how he's swinging the bat if he digs in. 2-2 is barely nipped back foul. And Bucknell's fighting here. And how big are those insurance runs loom now here, Brendan, that uh, Simpson yielded last half inning? Holy Cross with two in the fifth, two in the eighth. Klugerman recently retired. Rawlings at first, Bell at third, and the high fastball sprays away. This will release Rawlings from first and the 3-2 count with two outs, but the run that matters is scales at the plate. A ball in the alley can make this a one-run game. Cape in the bluff to third. Brett Smith, as Justin mentioned, would be next. He is 0 for 4 with four strikeouts. Just, we're not making that part up. Career 300 hitter. 3-2, a looper into shallow left. Plunks down for a base hit. Bell scores, no throw to third. And a big hit for Chucky Scales, the nine hitter. Both sides, the nine place spot coming up big. Just a little bleeders. You take another look here in the Patriot League Network. Inside out swing, muscles it out to shallow left field. We talked about Rowlings was going on the pitch, able to go first to third, even though the ball was hit in front of him. And all of a sudden, Brendan, you have the tying run at first base with excellent speed in your team leader in stolen bases, Chucky Scales, and Brett Smith at the plate, who had a clutch double last weekend in game two against Navy to jumpstart that contest. Ultimately, Bucknell's in the championship series because of that hit. Smith takes a strike. Scales has swiped nine bags this year. Cape and sets. Breaking ball misses again. Nine hits for Bucknell, just two runs to show. Holy Cross with six hits, four runs. Rawlings at third, the pitch tased into deep left field. Back goes Schlick, it bounces down off the track for a hit. One run scores, they'll hold the runner at third base, and it's a one run game in Worcester in game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. What a hit by Brett Smith. We talked about it. he's got such great mental toughness, four strikeouts and four at bats. He's not moping and pouting in his fifth at bat. Launches a double over Schlitt's head. Scales able to go first to third. Tip your cap to Schlitt. He got off to that ball real quick. Hit the cutoff, man. And baseball, it's a funny game. It was Danny Rafferty who made the error that led to two unearned runs in the uh, fifth inning for Holy Cross. Allowed him to take the lead. And who's batting right now? Danny Rafferty has a chance for atonement. George Capen is not making this easy on himself, no question. I think that was a, a good hold by Scott Heather, who was pretty aggressive, sending Rafferty a few innings ago. Rafferty today, 0 for 3, he walked in the eighth. Cut out at home after running over that sign. Holy Cross infield playing back for the powerful lefty. Fastball downstairs and away. Capen's one of the best strikeout men in the league. He could really use one here. Contact is putting this place in silence. Next pitch is scorched back towards us. 
Rafferty, a career 424 hitter in Patriot League tournament play. A 352 hitter against right handers. Does so much for this team. He's also a pitcher. He's appeared in a couple <laughs> games this year for Bucknell. Capen staring in for Wojtek's sign. And the 1-1. One -one. Pop behind us. Once again, the Bison down to their final strike. And once again, Holy Cross in a one-run game. It's just, it's a magnet for them. Drama. If this score holds, this is the 10th one-run Patriot League tournament game for Holy Cross since 2010. They've been to the tournament five times in that span. One, two. It's low. Great Some take. dirt peers out. Great take by Rafferty to lay off the change up. One swing will do the trick for Rafferty. The 2-2 two -two pitch is on the way. And we'll do it again. Senior versus senior. All league selection versus all league uh, selection. Rafferty drafted last year, the 11th Bucknell player to ever be drafted. Returned for his senior season, looking to propel his team to another championship. 2-2. Two -two. Hit in the air to left. Schlick is back. He's ready for it. Makes the catch, and Holy Cross takes game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. It did not come easy here in the ninth. A four to three win for the Crusaders. Bucknell scores a pair of runs in this ninth inning. They put runners at second and third, threatening to take the lead. But George Capen just wanted to make things interesting here in the twilight hours of Worcester. The sun sets down, but the Crusaders take a one nil lead in this series. Game two starts at noon tomorrow. And another one run game for Holy Cross. That is their 14th of the year. They're now eight and six in that spot. George Capen gets the save. Connor Van Hoos, the losing pitcher, he was still outstanding for the Bucknell Bison. That will do it for us here in Worcester, Massachusetts. For our entire crew, executive producers Jimmy Johnson and Chris Boscherini. For Zach Halsey, our director, cameramen Justin Moore, Jamie Reynolds, Jason Clark, Priscilla Suero, and our SIDs for this series, Matt Torres and Greg Salona. And for Justin Antwell, my name is Brendan Glassheen. We are signing off from Hanover Insurance Park in Worcester, Holy Cross gets the win in game one.